Power Real Estate. Over the 1,200 metres for some of the speed machines. Pinwheel is the current favourite. 240 on fixed odds. Title at 440, 850 for Welcome Gold. And coming out of the stalls, Welcome Gold was the best in the stride. Title showing early speed, followed by Rolling Pin and then Pinwheel. Followed in behind them by Centennial Park, who'll settle down fifth on the rail. Then tag us, Adna Con and Stella Academy back last. So Welcome Gold settles into his rhythm in front here. Held together today, led by about a length and a quarter on title, who sits outside of him. Rolling Pin is third, and then Pinwheel, the favourite in four spots. So he's nicely poised at the moment. Then Centennial Park and tag us. Adna Con splits that pair in the middle, and Stella Academy is last. Welcome Gold at the 600 maintains the advantage by a length and a quarter. Title is doing the chasing in second spot, followed by Rolling Pin. McAvoy starting to urge Pinwheel along on the outside. He's starting to come up on the outside to almost make a line of three as they round the bend. And Centennial Park's run up onto the back of him. Into the straight, Welcome Gold lead. Title in the centre, Pinwheel on the outside. He looks reasonably confident now. He'll have to go from a Centennial Park. It's starting to rush down the outside, but Pinwheel's strung away. 150 to go. Pinwheel is the class. He's too good. He's racing away. And Pinwheel beats Centennial Park and Rolling Pin. Then Title, who knocked up from Welcome Gold. Then uh, Adnacon tag us, and last in was Stella Academy. Oh, it was Pinwheel's day today, wasn't it? The seven-year-old by Lonroy for Pete Snowden and Karen McAvoy. Just too strong. Centennial Park, good run by him. And too strong. Centennial Park, good run by him. For... Pinwheel just stuck into that next gear the last 100 metres or so, and uh, the class tied at the end, and he, he went away from them. So Centennial Park. Surprised me how well he finished today. It's um, good signs because um, I really thought that he's going to go there with that run under his belt in good form. The feature in Sydney, it may not have been a vintage missile stakes, but take nothing away from Pinwheel. He's as, he's as genuine as they come. Uh, Karen McAvoy mentioned the prize money. He's a good horse. He's, he's his 11th win there yesterday. Uh, loves his home track at Warwick Farm. Let's face it, he came off a fourth in the, in the Stradbroke at his previous start. So that was very good credentials for a race like this. And he, he dominated at the finish. And I was interested to hear Peter say that he wasn't uh, crunched. Left the favourite out. At Morford Phil for the next, he's left out Southern Speed. Well, is that brave? Can you leave her out? She's a star. She does perform first up too. She's had uh, three runs first up for two wins. She's now holding at that mark. Still money coming for Happy Trails. 5.50 into 4.20. Ready to run in the spring stakes. They stand well. Right to go. He lets them go in the spring stakes. And Southern Speed dwelled at the start. And first away was Gossip Girl with Light Express and Justify That making a line of three, then Diplomatic Force Candle, followed by the eighth maker, one away Happy Trail, Southern Speed, Alco Pop, two away Alco Pop, second last in the race, Drifting Spirit. And last of all on its inside is Bertucci coming up to the home turn. 600 metres to go and the leader is Gossip Girl by one and a half light express. Justify that diplomatic force candle. Then the eighth maker followed by Southern Speed, Happy Trails. Further back to Alco Pop, Drifting Spirit. And Batucci's last on the turn. The leader, Gossip Girl, Light Express. Here's Diplomatic Force coming in at the eighth maker wider. Further back, Candle, there's no Southern Speed. Happy Trails is down the outside. 200 metres to go. Gossip Girl leads. Diplomatic Force coming at it strongly. And now the, the eighth maker runs on. And Happy Trails is wider out. It's still Gossip Girl. Gossip Girl, Happy Trails is diving. Gossip Girl, Happy Trails. A driving finish. Happy Trails got up. Happy Trails won it by a head. Gossip Girl was second. Southern Speed got going for third. They're then justify that, the ace maker from Elko Pop. Diplomatic Force didn't finish off from Candle. Further back to Light Express, then Bertucci and Tripting Spirit at the tail end. The money was right. They've come for it on track, Happy Trails. And he has won. We go. I'd love to go to the Cox Plate. I think he's a Cox Plate horse. I, I sympathise with Paul. It's the Dato Tanchin Nam stakes he's referring to, but I'm still calling it the Fian. Yeah, I think I think Paul better call it the Fian as well. Um, what about this horse, Happy Trail? Sixth in the Doncaster earlier this year, beaten less than a length and a half by more joyous. I'm still adamant this horse should have won the Doncaster. I get roused down every time I say it, but this horse was desperately unlucky not to win a race like that. I'm, I'm happy to see him get another win on the board. That's only his third win. He's such a talented horse, and hopefully this kill... Does him the world of good. Do you think he's a genuine Group Oneer in a spring? Oh look, he's performed maybe well in a, good races. Maybe, uh, maybe a, a race like the uh, Turek, yeah, something look, like that. He's a mile knockout in a big mile. Yeah. yeah, look, he's he's one of them horses ready to pounce at the right yeah. time if the timing's right for him, and he gets things 
things uh, run to suit him. He's certainly a chance in anything he can test. Now, Southern speed just hits the flat speed. You know, some people criticise, oh, she should have got her in the race earlier. Well, you know, it's she her couldn't. first run back. It's her first run back. She hit the line really well. I think that's all you want to see from a, a top mare at a first start back. Look, another 200 metres, she wins the race. And I thought it was a great comeback. And I, I agree with you. She just... Well, Welcome back here to Rose Hill Gardens. Behind me, you can see some of the best two-year-olds of last season in the ring. Of course, the feature race coming up, the San Domenico Stakes, all too hard. The half-brother to Black Caviar is the favourite. Uh, San Domenico, the group three. For the three-year-olds, the new season three-year-olds, all too hard, as I said, the half-brother to Black Caviar out of the great mayor, Hell Singh. All too hard, out at $2.30. I tell you what, though, he's quality animal. I think he's very good odds now. That, that is very good. Sporting bet.com, don't you, market mover. This filly from the Gay Waterhouse stable. Domenico for 2012. Here's Mark. All too hard uh, coming up to. Stand well, they're off and racing. All too hard was last out of the stalls. Matavai came out slowly, goes back behind him now. So the two fillies race away early. It's Switzerland on the outside, leading from Grey Fontaine and then Ninth Legion. And then uh, Don't Blink, followed by All Too Hard, who uh, walked out of the stalls as track second last and last as Matavai. They're going through the first section at a pretty leisurely pace and Switzerland led from Grey Fontaine moving up to its quarters and then Ninth Legion, followed by Don't Blink. All Too Hard back second last. Last is about five or six off the lead and Matabai last approaching the home turn and Switzerland held together led by three quarters Dre Fontaine don't blink in third spot from ninth legion Bun's about to pull all too hard to the outside but he's giving these leaders a big start coming down towards the 300 and Switzerland led from Dre Fontaine a length away then don't blink all too hard giving a cup with a whip coming down the outside Switzerland in front with 300 to go lead from Dre Fontaine all too hard can't get there from there that's Switzerland's holding them safely at bay and will go down to win it. Switzerland beat Dre Fontaine. All too hard finished third. Then Ninth Legion, don't blink at last. Him was Matabai. And in the Golden Slipper, Switzerland has resumed as a three year old filly. She's taken out the San Domenico Stakes. She's beaten another filly in number last 633.57. So, uh, and time, the uh, the initial time. All too hard finished third. Then Ninth Legion, don't blink at last. Him was Matabai. Well, it might have been a race of times. So we'll talk about them shortly with Vince. But uh, Rich Snitzeland, set sort of right here by Corey Brown. Surprised uh, Joy Fontaine gave up so easily. And all too hard making a bad habit of being tardily away, isn't he? Well, look, um, a couple of our feature races were over uh, in, in the first furlong. I, I got the surprise of my life, which, well, I knew it was going to happen because I interviewed Gay Waterhouse prior to the race and she gave the inkling due to the big wind. I don't know if the wind was that strong uh, that they were going to try and look for a little bit of cover on Joy Fontaine. I thought she was a little bit more wound up, Dre Fontaine. I thought that she'd bounce lead and, and make them really chase her. So well, I, I think she's a jump and run filly. I think next time you've got to see her jump and run. Snitzelam will improve, had the winkers on. Gerald said yesterday, Mark, he doesn't think he's better yesterday. Look, I think all too hard. Look, he looked too soft before the race. There's no doubt about that. I'm just surprised he was so short. This was a race he was always going to be vulnerable in. And I just think he's paying the penalty for being Black Caviar's half-brother because everyone expects him to be another black caviar. Um, he's just not quite that good at the moment. Like, he might improve once they get over a bit more ground, and certainly this race wasn't run to suit him. But uh, the race was certainly put on for Snitzerland and Dreyfontaine to find it out the way they went through the early section of the race. Who's got the most improvement here, Mark? Obviously, what you're saying, all too hard physically. Oh, look, he, look, he looks soft, didn't he, Richard? No doubt the world. Uh, as I said, he was there, Switzerland. She did run second in the Golden Slipper earlier this year. Run her last 633.57. Hard to run them down at that. It says it all, Matt. Uh, she's a very sharp filly. And uh, look, I think Gerald's doing the right thing. He's not going to try and train that speed out of her. She'll stay at 1,200 now. She can go to Melbourne. There's a, there's a lot of races for a good filly like her. And she's up with the best sprinting fillies around. There's no doubt about that. Um... There was some horrible tackle. All too hard, jury's out. It could be the story of his life. He, he continues to walk out of the barriers. What, all three starts that he's had or something? Yeah, but I don't, it, it, he, he does the same That's thing every ridiculous. time. That's a terrible habit That's for ridiculous. a good horse to have. He's he's a baby. He's got no he's, idea. He's, well, he's run home. He probably run the fastest last split in the race. Well, he has. There's no doubt about it. But he'll do that. He'll continue to do that all of his life. When you're a back marker in this business, yeah, he it's, hasn't had 40 starts, you know. Okay. Well, no, look, he's not going to either. He, he, you know, he's a potential stallion next year. He'll want to grow up pretty quickly and get a few runs on the board. Seven and down the bottom. Arshina is third. Two uh, Metro wins from nine rides to want to press forward here. Plant Voyage and uh, perhaps Shane Warrior. 
be uh, the way. Cheyenne Warrior has the lead. 600 left to go. A length clear on Psychic Mick. Two lengths away. Star Sheen and Nick the Travelling Man. One free of doubt. Planet Voyage is pretty awkwardly placed. Second last. The rail of underestimation brings up the rear. Cheyenne Warrior on the swing for home. 350 to go. Led from Psychic Mick. Star Sheen. The Travelling Man behind them and the red colours under pressure. Planet Voyage has made up ground. He switches course over the leader's heels. He's finishing off fairly well. Psychic Mick ran to the lead inside the 200 metres. He's drawn a length and a half on Star Sheen. Planet Voyage only boxing the rail. Free of doubt is making ground, but it's Psychic Mick and a happy birthday for Chris Simons coming up. Psychic Mick won it by three lengths to Planet Voyage. Getting up a third a length away, free of doubt, followed by Star Sheen. Underestimation of Rex Cheyenne Warrior and the Travelling Man. Probably never travelling today. Last home. This horse just keeps on winning and well done to Chris Simons on his birthday. Horse coming off a 75 in Adelaide and Always presented well here today. Mix a top pick from the yard side. We have not only known him to the Caulfield Guineas. Whether we get the under his head or not, before that you like what one one eight, you pay ten grand and now you've got a vain stakes winner. Just the same as Seat Boy and a rather sun and star spangled banner. They're the good stories of racing we should be getting told. Psychic Mick for Chris Simons and Daniel Clark, and that's an old team, isn't it? The same as vain stakes, but it's it's there as one. Certainly wasn't the best vein stakes. If you look at some of the horses that have come through, as you mentioned, Seat Boy Gold Archer last year, Tirac Top Soul. Star witness here before and Star Spangled Banner before that. It, class wasn't there. I'm certainly not knocking the win or the connections. It's great to uh, pick up a stakes race at this time of year. But this horse, when you consider two of his last three wins, he was nine lengths slower than the other races at the same trip on the same day. That suggests that this race might not be the best form reference and we'd probably get a line. And here they are in four now. She did run over a second faster. So I'd suggest the Phillies race is much better than the Colts and Geldings here. Uh, the second horse, Planet Voyage, just got further back than expected, to, which was hard to do there at, uh, at Caulfield yesterday. But look, I'm not going to bag a horse that's won four out of four, and he did it with style. 53 year old fillies. Our fillies are on the show here. Some already who beat Snitzerland home, and the Riesling comes up uh, in this race here. Very much backable now. 260 on the tote, and the bookies are getting it out, and the support obviously has been there for Elite Al. I want to go... Uh, Looming down... So, uh, that's good going. So uh, all too well, we have to go uh, well, below 33s to get uh, to get competitive there. Couldn't do so. Runners moving in. Sam already jumped very well down on the inside. Members Joy got away quickly. And uh, going through as a greater as they settle into stride. And uh, now running to the front lady of Harrods ahead of a greater and the lead house right up there. Sam already's getting into a pretty good spot. And the green colour, she's fourth on the rails. Being followed by formidable one and a half ephemera, and then came convene Bloomingdale Miss Members Joy. Marie's at two lengths away and real stolly last. At the 600 metres, Lady of Harrods in front a length and a quarter. Elite Hell running second, two lengths in advance of Aguada. Sam already a length further back on the fence. Then came Ephemera, formidable under pressure, followed by Convene and two or three lengths to Bloomingdale Miss. Around the home turn now, and Lady of Harrods being joined by Elite L. Sam already's back behind them, struggling, it appeared on the rail. Aguada's after Elite L at the 200, and Elite L's about a length in front of Aguada and two lengths to Ephemera, starting to run on fairly well. Elite L with 100 to go, looks to have Aguada's measure, and then came Ephemera, and Elite L keeps on winning. Elite L by a length and a quarter, Aguada, stayed on really well about four or five lengths of Femra, and then came Sama Reddy, who battled from a fair way out. Real Stolly got home along the rails, followed by Convene, formidable. Psychic Mick remains unbeaten in the miles to win the vein, and now Elite Owl with uh, real class and conditions to suit. Goes a lot quicker in the Phillies division here, Elite Owl. Four out of four, never going to get beaten the way that panned out. One five oh three here, three here against one six one three, so about six lengths plus quicker. Uh, quality filly, you knew that the favourite was in hot trouble on the home turn. She Let's have a look at the interims first. Uh, 353, 63, 50. A maxi div will be the $4 GSP. So she went round at $4 here on track. All right, now here's Tony Vassell. When came Sam Four for four. Uh, each this sort of round, as Tony Vassell said, she's the best wet track in Victoria since Stain Vita. It means nothing to Shark because uh, there was no round when Stain Vita was, oh, no, it was all, by the way, uh, chugging through uh, wet ground here in... Uh, the residual fitness from those three really good wins during that winter period, again, like Lady Melksham. Uh, this was run at a much better tempo. I think in time this will prove to be a much better long by the vein. Uh, six lengths faster, didn't they? Yeah, over a second faster than the boys in the vein. So that gives you an idea of the strength of the vein, perhaps. So Lee Dell, she is a group class 
Philly, she's going wet ground very, very well. On wet ground, well, I want to see her on dry ground too before I pigeonhole her. Tony Vassell said post race that the day she ran on dead ground at Bendigo, she really felt it. Mm. It'd be a concern. I mean, you, you, you've got no conclusive data, but that's what she said. Okay. Look, she was a little, I think Sam Arendi's run can be forgiven. She just didn't look comfortable in that ground at any stage of the race. She was niggled all the way. Um, maybe we'll give her one more chance there on dry ground, but uh, on face fair, she looked uh, like she struggled through the ground. Let's start with the lead, L. That was the race, of course. Samar Reddy was the firm favourite. Damien Oliver on board. And again, if those tracks stay wet, they'll have a lot of fun with her. Yeah, she's a, she's very good on uh, the wet going there. I think um, Tony Basil there, we heard his voice was he's very measured about where she goes. He's not getting ahead of himself with her. Um, I think the race is a hard one to read. Um, Sam Reddy was the talking point out of the race, before the race and out of it, because of her big reputation. It was a disappointing run. Whether there are excuses, it's hard to know. She, Yes, she may not have liked the wet going. Yes, you know, first up in wintry conditions. But I think Mick Price, just in the grabs I've seen and the talk about a pre-race, has been quite guarded about her coming back this spring. I, I don't know why that is. I, I just... I think I just detected even before the race, he was quite guarded about it, Ronnie. Don't be stupid. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's stupid. Now, why is that stupid? Why cannot a trainer be guarded? Rudging a, 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 a filly on a heavy 10 there first up. It's just, it's just a total forgive, Ron. We've got to have another look at her. We've got, we've got to have another. Gee, that's a brave statement. Well, let's have another well, look. That's a brave... For Peter Moody and the star WA galloper, uh, Lucky Grace built a fantastic record. Uh, 10 from 13 wins on heavy grounds. New territory for it today. Well, they're the two key players in the Bettings and more an next pick as a head of second effort. OK, it's been a terrific race for you to see. The only thing you can't uh, be confident about is the ability to handle wet ground. Yeah, but somebody is. Hang on, when we get... Market mover, a race that uh, we always think is a, is a key pointer to, to spring, but you... Look at... Yeah, I reckon that's what swayed a lot of... 440 into 330. He's the sporting bet market mover, and he's Sammy's pick from the younger. Oh, this is the uh, the feature this afternoon, the Baby Lawrence, a terrific lineup here. Let's go to Greg for the younger. 100 metres, Prince of Armour missed the start by a length and a half. Bare Knuckle got away well, and so did Lucky Gray, and he's right up there going for the lead early in company with Zamora. So after 200 metres, Lucky Gray is being restrained. He wants to find a leader, and Zamora obliges now and runs to the lead with Bare Knuckle third, uh, moving up second effort around the outside. So now Lucky Gray ends up fourth the inside. Last of all, inside the 800, Zamora the leader, running second is second effort a half length away, Bare Knuckle third, and Lucky Gray fourth the inside. Two lengths to ready to rip, being followed Mr. Chard Fiumicino. Heart of Dreams is making a run around the outside at the 600, followed by Seville, Prince Obama, and Guns at five as last. To the turn now, Zamora leading narrowly from second effort. Bare knuckle the bolt, and Lucky Gray has to wait on a run. Knew it's off and running now on ready to rip around the outside, and Heart of Dreams was next. Into the straight now, and second effort claims Zamora. Lucky Gray got into the clear. Now ready to rip, coming down the outside at the 200, and second effort is the leader. He's a length and a half in front of Ready to Rip Lucky Gray and Zamora boxing on on the inside. Second effort, the leader. He's still a length and a half clear. Zamora coming back with Lucky Gray and Ready to Rip, but second effort. Second effort has won it by nearly a length. Zamora Ready to Rip will grab third, I'd say, out wide from Lucky Gray. Then came Heart of Dreams, Mr. Chard, followed further back by Guns at five, Bare Knuckle, Fiumicino, Seville second last, and Prince Obama last home. Well, all the shoes stayed on and working today, and uh, Chris Simon's making a pretty special birthday for him. Well done to Chris, well done to, uh, to Clint McDonald here. Good job, uh, go to the trainers' punters club. Yeah, no, it's the worst punters club in Australia. It's not broken. They go train numbers one, two, and three in the premiership, and you can't back a winner. Last three years been Then came hard of course, passing out of the sales, a superior soft tracker, nine times on a slower heavy ground for eight wins, an excusable failure to start before, and that's a good combination. There's C. Simons and uh, C. McDonald, uh, Chris. Um, that goes back a long time. C. McDonald, uh, Chris. Um, that goes back a long time. It was going to be a, a hot form race for the big spring race. Not normally is by the same take in this race, uh, but what we saw there was fit race horses through, through winter racing performing well. Yeah, of the two races, the Lawrence Stakes and the Memsey, uh, the Memsey's probably become the race now to come out of and go forward uh, towards the Cups and the Kings Plate. Uh, You're right. I, I don't think there's many bet, better wet trackers than him. I think he's had nine goes on the wet for eight wins, and the, the one time he was beaten on a wet track, I think he sprung his plates in front. So uh, he should nearly be unbeaten on wet tracks, and he proved it there yesterday. Wait for age win. Look, he's, he's hardly been regarded as a wait for age performer, but he's been a, a good campaigner. Uh, Zamora, he's been consistent all prep. He's, he's just battling to win one, ready to rip, seem to have his chance. Lucky Gray. Well, 
that's very forgiving there. He was ridden closer than normal, and, and in doing that, he over-raced. It was his first go on a heavy 10, so I, I, I thought he got a pass mark myself for a horse that's never had any experience at all on, on wet tracks, considering he was ridden a little bit upside down as well. That's Heart of Dreams running into fifth place there. That's his first run in, in 11 months. I must say, Richard, I, I, I don't... Um, yeah, it, was a, it used to be a race that, that you would start Melbourne Cup horses off in, but it's a little early now. The tracks are wet. People have changed the way they train them. And it, look, it is it is a race. Okay, we're Caulfield, Caulfield for the Cochrane. Good race. There's Adam McCann. I'll give you a bit of a wrap-up. I think Shane's still here. Otherwise, he was uh, booking a restaurant to fly out drum. Uh, Lady Melksham's well found here, but Avoid Lightning went up very, very... So they bet at 4.20 and some little, little bits of 4.40. Forget 4.40 as you talk like it was 4.20. And she... Cochrane stakes 1,200. Lady Melksham got away well, so did Glaze in the middle, and the Void Lightning began very quickly. And Lasacia got out of the stools well. Yes, they went right back, settled down a clear last. Glaze went through and took up the running early with Lasacia on her outside, and they lead Lady Melksham right on the speed, a length to a third. Lucky Penny's getting up on the rails, fourth, and they say. Glows the leader at the 600 metres, two lengths clear. Lady Melksham second from Lucky Penny. Lasociata working into it well, followed by Oasis Bloom. Avoid Lightning on the outside, and then Specific and Benaria as they near the turn. And 3.50 to go. Glows is going to corner Lady Melksham on her outside. And Lasociata looked to travel well, coming with her run, and then Avoid Lightning and Specific in the straight. And it's Glows, Lady Melksham, and Lasociata. These are the three passing the 200 metres. Clear from Avoid Lightning. Lasociata with Lady Melksham in the middle trying to fight back. Lasociata and Lady Melksham coming down to the line. Lasociata the outside and Lady Melksham. Lady Melksham strong to the line. And she's won it by a long neck. Lasociata, a length away glows, avoid lightning, ran fourth and then Benaria specific, followed in by Oasis Bloom, Yossi Penny Bossy loved it she's going a lot better than the Bombers uh, in the Bombers colours here, Lady <laughs> Melksham 420 to 350, Punish knew what they were doing looks as like Good performance 360, 360, 360 across the board, one four out of five yeah, lightly raced for a four year old mare and gee that was a good win Matt I mean I watched her going up the hill the first time. She was over racing. She'd had a little bit of a, a let up between runs and she was too fresh and she wanted to get, get tracking in the race. And that usually means you run out of gas about, you know, 100 metres from the line. She got into a fight with L'Associate who had a cold. L'Associate had her absolutely cold. She, you know, I was expecting that she would just go on and win. But um, it was a little on pace dominated race there. But she battled back hard this mare. And that's the impressive bit. After over racing, being over in the spring carnival ahead. And uh, look, let's jump in into the headlines. And of course, during the week, we had that terrible news on Atlantic Jewel. Well, what we can tell you is that its racing future hangs in the balance. What has happened in the last 48 hours? Uh, MRI scans were taken of that injured tendon. They've been sent across to uh, England and also to France for experts on behalf of owners Coolmore to study them. We should know in the next few days her racing future, but at this stage, it would be probably unlikely that we'll see her again due to that tendon injury. We'll get the official word, as I say, over the next few days. Uh, plenty of international action to uh, to look at. Uh, I've been having to, uh, to look at uh, I've been to have a look at uh, Newbury overnight, the Jeffrey Freer Stakes Group Three race, and this featured. Well, Matt Moden was a horse who came to the Melbourne Cup last year and ran last. So that's the pacemaker in front for the horse running second, Mars Marvel, who's the a ledger winner. Let's go to the action here. The horse you're looking for is in this place. He's called them very dark silver colours with a yellowy star. Max Second Mars. This is Mount Athos. Some way back now, Arrigo Brown Panther. Uh, Mount Athos and Modun as they head now round this final turn. Mars Marble looks ready to pick up his pacemaker whenever he wants to, but it's a very early break for home here. Mars Marvel just about ranging alongside Dartford, who can gallop on for not very much longer. Then back in third now, Brown Panther down the outside under Richard Kingscote, followed by Arrigo, and then Mount Athos is being asked to close, and Modun. They are getting closer to the front pair. Mars Marvel leads, passing the three. Brown Panther, though, is almost on terms. So is Mount Athos between the pair. Modun is plugging on back in fourth. Then Dartford on the retreat. And Arrigo well beaten inside the two. And Brown Panther and Mount Athos are the two that look like fighting it out. Modun is trying hard down the outside. Mars Marvel couldn't quick enough. They head to the furlong pound. 
Pole and it's Mount Athos by two lengths. Mount Athos is too quick for Brown Panther. Then Mo Dunn back in third and racing up towards the line. It's Mount Athos by two and a half. It's Felburn next stop for Mount Athos who wins the Jeffrey Prea. His second Brown Panther, Mo Dunn third. Miles, Miles. Well, my eyes tell me that's a, a good performance. Uh, went off the favourite there. Now, Luca Kamani post race. Actually, he missed the race. He was stuck on the freeway. Uh, the old M25, as you do there when you travel around England. Uh, said, I don't know if he knows this, but he said uh, he had 52 and a half in the Melbourne Cup before that. Now he's got 53 and a half. Greg Kaplan must have told him something. Uh, but uh, he's got a much more progressive profile than any of the horses I think Luke has brought out for the Cups in the past. Maybe Luke has been on the phone to Mick Duffield and he's got some of that psychic Psychic. knowledge happening there. Psychic Luke. You're dead right. This horse is better than Purple Moon. He's progressive. He's at the right end of the weight scale. He could probably run another good race before coming out here and still be on a very winnable weight. Well, he's going straight to quarantine. He's going to come out here Perfect. September 12, get him ready uh, for possibly the Caulfield Cup or the uh, Alan Geelong Cup later. But uh, he's not going to get that cue all through. Well, Brown Panthers are uh, a group. So I can look at the market for, for it. Uh, this is uh, from Sporting Bet. And they've got, uh, what are we there? The second favourite, $18 for uh, Mount Athos. American runs tonight, Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. That was about Monday morning our time in France in the Prix de Kergolo, the race uh, he led him. A new Melbourne Cup favourite, as Matt just mentioned, Mount Athos is a horse trained by Luca Kamani. It's uh, one overnight, the Geoffrey Freer uh, being run there at Newbury. Here it is, uh, out in front. The one thing that uh, the local scribes in England say that this horse has got tactical speed and really drives hard. It was written patiently early by Ryan Moore. We'll show you more and in interest, uh, Mount Athos. It's now TAB, sports bet favourite to win the Melbourne Cup after that win, 26 into 18. It's in the Caulfield Cup, but the early talk is that it won't be running in that race. We'll monitor that over the next few days. International results this morning from America for Australian interests. Jackalberry won the American St. Ledger. Definitely comes for the Caulfield and Melbourne Cups. Very unlikely next spring. As we told you, who we got you has been retired. Hortensia Gallops told you, who we got you has been retired. Hortensia. Commanding Jewel. Uh, there's your, look at her, your first look at her in town anyway. Uh, for Commanding Jewel. We know the story about her. We know the relations. It's a bit like all those horses below the black caviar. Suddenly gets start mentioned in the, yeah. the same. Yeah, it's a uh, in researching, they found another 194 riders who have lost their lives in Australia. Well, she takes the outside gate, so they're right to go. Sec. Racing at Mooney Valley, beautiful start. Commanding Jewel jumping evenly. Flying hostess Nick Skiofsky drives through, and now Nick Skiofsky settles in front of Al. On the outside is Mama's Choice, keeping the warm favourite pocketed away. Two links to Tyana, and they're being followed by Flying Hostess, and a link to the half show My Miss, and Cyclone Jess and Nick away. Fandom level with Nick Skiofsky. Ollie's pushing into the clear on Commanding Jewel, nearly out of that pocket now, with Mama's Choice on her outside, so it's nearly a line of four coming around the turn and Flying Hostess was running on but now Commanding Jewel strides to the lead. Got away a length and a half in front of down the outside now Flying Hostess. Mama's Choice is boxing on well. Commanding Jewel two in front. Flying Hostess making up good ground but Commanding Jewel won it by a length and a quarter to Flying Hostess. Two links away Mama's Choice third and show my miss. She's come from last defence to run on Skiofsky. Well, another step towards the uh, the top or hopefully the top for this uh, well related filly Commanding Jewel. Uh, another consummate ride by Oliver on a talented filly. She took a little bit of a rub up the neck to sort of improve into the race. And then next thing, it was loft. $205,000 filly. Uh, Shark, she's got a great attitude. She carries herself well, presents herself well. And uh, again, like and she'd have plenty of upside. But there's some depth in the race. I like flying hostess and also nice filly. There's three-quarter sister to Atlantic Jewel. She's won two out of two and better races beckon. Yeah, looks a good filly. Um, Thousand guineas type of filly, probably. Good as Nikita, probably not, um, but she should be racing too. We have the Show County quality at listed level coming up at Warwick Farm and the Victorian TAB Sportsbet market mover. Moment of change from the Peter Moody yard. The favourite at 190 is 190 into 170. Racing, moment of change. The favourite jumped at okay. Norikos was the, probably the best into stride out wide, but it's now under restraint and Big Bonanza will drive through. 
and hit the lead. So Big Bonanza from Sunfin Any Pin tied all over on the fence in a handy spot. Then moment of change, the favourite settling down fourth from Monton Norikos drifting back and then rumour and scandal. Ernest Ernest and, and Big Bonanza led by three quarters. Some Penny Pin is second, title is third, moment of change fourth, and then Norikos in fifth spot out three wide without cover. Monton's behind it and then came further back. Rumour and scandal, Ernest Ernest. At last is pain in the glass. So Big Bonanza led, some Penny Pin already under pressure. Norikos on the outside, titles pushing out off the fence and moment of change coming up on the outside to issue a challenge as well. Into the straight here and title got the split to go after Big Bonanza. Moment of change wider out. Ernest Ernest looking for a run down nearer the inside and then Monton out wide. Title put his head in front. Moment of change on the outside is coming after him and moment of change moved up in the centre of the track. It's the better at title and comes away and does the job. Moment of change beat title. Some pin any pin third. Then Ernest Ernest from Rumour and Scandal. Monton was next from Big Bonanza pain in the glass. And uh, back last of all was Norikos. Touched on Elliot's looking for third, though. Only cost $50,000 at the sales. Moment the change. A great result here for Sloan Bloodstock with what's to come for him. Obviously, dry tracker. Uh, the second form is sectionals, thanks to ValleySectionals.com.au. Well, uh, something anything was going to run fifth or sixth and run third. It's strange, Mr. Wright. It was a watch, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Uh, moment of change to cover some ground coming off that bend. And being first up at that distance, you alluded to, it's, it's not his best trick. I was really encouraged by the effort, but something many I, I love the way that he surged. I've got to agree. I, I, when I called the race, I thought oh, I just thought he would have accelerated quicker at the top of the straight, and then you look at the splits, and he's run the best of the day. So um, it's hard to bag him on that, but he certainly raced like a horse looking for fourteen or sixteen, in my opinion. He's raced the way he could settle, and um... one was, uh, was very fast, one nine forty two. That broke Might and Power's race record, and as we heard, he's on an Epsom trail. I think it's a pretty strong race this one. Uh, moment of change, first time he came to Sydney, I think you saw him, he went crazy and just uh, took control of the rider and led as he pleased. And he has learned to settle a bit better in his races and I thought it was a, a strong effort. He was heavily backed. Um, he had the score on the board. He'd raced his last preparation mostly in Sydney. He'd, uh, he's had plenty of experience. There were some real beauties there. I think it's a strong race. I agree. It's a very strong race. Um, I'm, I'm taken with this horse. Uh, look, he's, it's, he's been unfortunate that he's... He's had to live with such a boom after winning his first start by 10 lengths and then everyone's had him the next far lap. Um, he's a mature, lightly raced four-year-old now. I can't believe how well he looked in the yard. He, he, he's really, he's matured and... In the market uh, in race number two, moment of change was back for a stack from $3 into 170 over 72 hours and then uh, Strawberry Boy with... Yeah, now they're all in. Set to go, they're off and racing. And uh, missing the start was strength. It went out the back with Toy Dini, Maximian and Sumeran began well. Albrecht on the outside, not all that far away. And Tatra rolling up near the rail and so too is Urquides. So there's about four across the track early. Maximian's got at the 800 metre mark. Maximian just in front of this hot pot, Sumerand on the outside. Then in behind them, Albrecht is on the outside of the stable mate, Tatra. Nadim's quest is striding forward and he goes up into third spot now, sitting out a little bit wide. Strength is trying to follow him forward, followed in behind them by Urquides. He's back along the rail trying to get off the fence now as they come up towards the bend and then Trophies and Toydini and Calamba is a long way back. So it's Sumerand and Maximian turning for home in front of Nadim's Quest is racing greenly and then Albrecht is starting to chime in strongly running to the 200. Albrecht cruised up now to Sumeran. Tatra getting the rails run. Toydini is starting to storm down the outside but Albrecht has got his mind on the job today. He's about a length in front and he'll be too good. Albrecht beat Toydini and Tatra. Then Sumeran followed him by Find them by a uh, Calamba who made up grand late and then came. It's son of Redoute's choice. Albrecht wins race number five. First leg of the quarter. The up and coming goes. Group three level to Albrecht, who was ultra impressive there. Karen McAvoy. I just don't think he, he was suited to Canterbury. He really got it. Got off. Over the daily three mile miles in Sydney and Melbourne. The winkers worked on Albrecht. The lack of blinkers didn't work on Summerand. Uh, the blinkers off. Ready for them coming here, Rich. It's a bit awesome. Uh, but he's, a, he's an emerging horse. Um, I think he's probably looking for a little bit further. Well, Patra's going to be you know, looking for further in the three-year-old races uh, over the spring. The spring champion stakes, as I thought. Guardini was good. But they switched him right on. It was too good for them. Yeah, a bit of recent racing does help, doesn't it, at this time of year. And Albrecht had had that. He was impressive. Uh, and he's a horse, obviously, that's uh, improving all the time, coming into the early spring, how far he goes. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I was thinking, Ronnie, what about taking the... Uh, 
the blinkers off somewhere and that was a well i think in fact five he he, he 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 was on the bias track at canterbury first up there and, and he's trained on beautifully there's some good runs in this toy dean he had residual queensland fitness on him and tatra well look out for him when he gets to the newcastle spring stakes or the gloaming uh, he's he's one to really follow Shadow Stakes, a group three race over 1,200 metres, and we've got a crack field with the one scratching number five, Mama's Choice. Short price favourite is Nikita, at $1.70 on the tote. We're going to get a good run. Well, let's have a look at the boom filly, and that is Nikita, number 10. Kristen Reith has the job to steer her around. Johnny Thompson puts the polish on for Padanac Farm. There's only one concern, and, and when you're taking the real short odds and you think they'll win, like I, I think she... And there they go, they're off and racing, and Nikita was the best in the stride in the set of the favourite. Single style came out fast on the outside, and so too did Cavalry Rose and Ichihara going through along the inside to be in a prominent spot, followed by She Rocks My World. Nikita, after jumping well, now easing back to take a trail, settles down in fifth spot, followed by Maidung Diademi, and then Flying Snitzel and Jade Marauder out the back. So Ichihara railed through to take the lead, and led by three corners on single style. She Rocks My World as next Cavalry Rose is fourth. Nikita midfield, one off the rail on the outside of May Dung. And then Flying Stitzel is out three wide on the outside of Dear Demi. And last of all is Jade Marauder. There'd be eight lengths first to last. And Ichihara led from single style is about a length away, but nigging along to stay with the leader. Then the Cavalry Rose, she rocks my world. Reef about to bring Nikita to the outside. She's starting to close in. And then May Dung looking for a run. Ichihara led for home from single style. Now Nikita coming down the centre. is setting it after Ichihara. He's set up a bit of a break here to Nikita with every bound is going after to Nikita revved up in the middle of the track, hit the lead, and this boom filly is racing away. Nikita beat Maydung, dear Demi, I'd say, got up for third in front of Ichihara. Then Jade Marauder and I catching run, followed by Flying Snitzel, and then Single Style, followed by Cavalry Rose, and a long last was She Rocks My World. Well, is she good? I think she's really good. Nikita, $1.90, $1.40, defeats Maydung, who runs a slashing race, runs second. Dear Demi, well, she's certainly on target for races uh, at a mile, maybe even a mile plus. And, but all honours with uh, a really progressive daughter of Fastnet Rock. We're going to hear a lot more about number 10, Nikita here, Rich, because she was just up at 1,200 metres and she's gone whack. That was ultra impressive. wonder how impressive. Yeah. And, and what have you done with, obviously, you've had reps on it just a few months since that first performance. Were you confident coming today? Uh, quietly, um, yeah. No, she's you know she's ticked all boxes, and um, she's done everything that we've asked of her. And um, I was a bit worried today because it probably wasn't one to beat. There was probably half a dozen um, of you know proven stakes class level fillies, and um, you know to see her to go out there and do that uh, is impressive. Right of the race, well, she's by fast net rock, of course. The uh, Sally who can do no wrong out of artistic, hence the name. Uh, no, nothing like Richie's favourite. Uh, no, it's the Romanian born Alexander. Yes, uh, as good as this filly is. Oh, look, um, she's A grade, there's no doubt about that. It was a big jump from what we'd seen her do on debut a few months ago. But I tell you what, I, we give all the big name jockeys raps. That was an outstanding rider, Christian Reese. She began Brandley. He knew where he was. He let it come too hard. I thought it was terrific. Jay Marauder, dear Demi, were both very good, and so was Flying Snitzel. Yeah, they ran uh, well. I, I think they'll be looking to dodge uh, and the cheetah uh, in the next couple of weeks, though. Particularly, dear Demi, I was most impressed with her because uh, she looked pretty big before the race. I think she'd probably be set for the Oaks in Melbourne. Um, she's come back in good order, and Jade Marauder looks to have strengthened up quite a good deal from last preparation. But I think they'll be trying to dodge this uh, this winner. Mark and Rich. Yesterday, Nikita winning there at Warwick Farm. She's a top class filly. Nathan Tinkler's got to decide if he runs against all too hard in the Golden Rose. Yeah, there's a threat. You know, if she, she wins and he runs second, it could cost him a lot of money. Anyway, look, she's top class. Uh, she proved it yesterday. I, I love her style. How she pings the lead in. She switches off when you want her to switch off. All you need to do on her is just judge the speed of the race. She can be up on leading. She can be back in the ruck. But she's she's a gem. Yeah, she is an absolute gem. This is only a second start. But all things point to her, you know, running a mile out. There's no problem with that, I don't think. And um, a lot to like about that win. There's there's a lot a lot of good runs in the race. Uh, May Dung charging up the fence here late. This horse out wide here, Flying Snitzel. This sat three and four deep, no cover the whole way. She's really developed with a break. I, I reckon she's going to make a really nice staying filly, Flying Snitzel. And uh, I'm really impressed with the way she... Pretty strong race for fillies at this time of year. Mm. Well, I was, before the race, I was saying, I don't know... 
anyone want to take a dollar seventy about uh, Nikita? She'd only yeah. you know won one race at Warwick Farm and hadn't beaten a whole lot. And there she was, though. Boy, she is something spectacular. I'll tell you what you notice about him. Well, no, it's in hundred meters, and uh, it's an interesting betting race. Believe it or not, Pinwheel is out to five dollars on course, four dollars seventy the tote. Number one, he's an old boy, but he's a superstar in Dan Lee. Huey Bowman's in the saddle for Chris Waller. Look, he's actually uh, shipped out. I wouldn't sort of six. I would have said two or four probably, but uh, it's like four. So the jockey back aboard. They're set. And they're off and racing. Rock and Pop again well out wide. It's one of the best in the stride. So too is Tag Us and Pinwheel is driving forward, followed by Rolling Pin up in that leading division as well. Then the Centennial Park just in behind them. Bog Lance on the inside, followed by Secret Admirer is rolling up near midfield. And then the Starts Me Up back behind them, followed by Lights of Heaven and then Polish Night, who's got back to be about third or fourth last. Dan Lee's with it, followed by Lamasery and Moores Creek at the rear. It's Rock and Pop on the outside, about a half in front of Rolling Pin. And as they run onto the course proper now, the 800 pinwheels poised right behind them in third spot. A half to bowl glance, followed by Tag Us. And then in behind them next as they settle down fully into stride up on the outside, Centennial Park from Lights of Heaven. Then in that group, Starts Me Up, followed by Secret Admirer. Polish Knight was further back, Moores Creek on the inside, followed by Dan Lee and Lamarisery starting to edge up around the outside as they approach the home turn. It's Rolling Pin on the inside, just in front. Led narrowly from Rock and Pop and Pinwheel going up on the outside to almost make a line of three. Bold Glance looks for a run and then tag us down the outside and Lamarisery's making a run, but Pinwheel Wheel stride to the front with 200 to go. Raced away by a better length and a half. Rolling pin on the inside. Secret Admirer getting through late. And Dan Lee, but Pinwheel whips back to back and beats Secret Admirer. Dan Lee got third. They're all over the shop for fourth. Lamasery was in that group as they crossed the line with Centennial Park. Polish Knight running on Moores Creek, making ground with rolling pin, bowl glance, and then lights of heaven, followed by Tagus, if I didn't mention it, followed by Starts Me Up and Rock and Pop has pulled up a little bit distressed here over the line, Rock and Pop, and finished a long last. He's such a tough horse, isn't he? Uh, maybe that elusive uh, sire and Lon Rover winning in the Warwick Stakes twice. He joins Superimpose and Falante, as well as Lon Rover, as dual winners of the Warwick Stakes. Pinwheel given a beautiful ride by Karen Mack. He was great. And how can you knock Labasseri? Good stayer. Outstanding. 2.13. Two third to pass the uh, the million dollar mark in prize money uh, for the end of him from the spring hope by the same token. So perhaps more to discuss here from those who finish behind the dual winner of this race, just as Dad was Lonway, who won it in two thousand and one and at two thousand and three. I thought it was outstanding yesterday. It certainly was, but give, give credit where credit's due, as you said. The the winner, um, Pinwheel, is uh, over a million dollars now. Uh, was one of his major races grand final. I thought he was good when he looked big. Uh, race one on the turn that uh, Bruce mentioned, and I think the runner Lamasery was an eye catcher. Uh, he looked very big before the race, and uh, he hit the line very strongly down the outside. Well, you wouldn't think he'd have weighed for age horse either. No, well, Dan Lee's had a little throat operation. So well, you wouldn't think he'd have weighed for age horse either. No, well, Dan Lee's had a little throat operation. Chris Waller told us on TV um, during the break when he was off, and he thinks he's breathing a lot better now. And I know that he's now a nine-year-old, but. Jeez, I thought his run was super. He'd come from well back. You mentioned Lemissary Brute. Back boy. He won't get a better ride than that one. And he drew he drew a what he drew a barrier eleven there. He put him it was positive. He let the rock and pop push him into the one one. He smoked his pipe. He did have the residual fitness. And he was just presented in perfect order for the day. Huh? You know, looked at, he, he caught them on the hop. He was journeying for home and just took her a while to balance up, but she was good. Dan Lee's had a little throat operation this time in. Uh, so there's a little theory to, to say that he wasn't breathing right last prep. He had to bustle his way through the middle there and charged home. There's other great runs in the race. Lamistry was terrific first up from the long spell. I thought a horse like Maul's Creek. Across the country, five, nine, and two. Morpeville, race number seven. This is the feature of the day there. And uh, we find our favourite very short at a dollar and ninety cents. That being Southern Speed. Now, seven ninety. 
Wait around for Alcopop at ten dollars. Now Alcopop eight fifty eight. And uh, one of the first to leave the gates was Justify That. It was going to look for the lead early. Magical Pearl was showing speed. So also was the eighth maker. Light Tan won't be far away. It was Hot to Trot. Southern Speed third last outside of Alcopop. My Bentley last of all. They leave the eight hundred meter mark behind them, and it's Justify That leading the Penny Edition Stakes field up towards the home turn from the eighth maker on the outside of Neck Away. Third Magical Pearl. Fourth was Light. 10, two to bag man Glamouse, then Realia. Next was he's hot to trot. Lindop trying to wind up the mare Southern Speed. Now she's spotting them about five length start. Then Alco Pop and my Bentley last. They're about to wheel. 400 metres left to travel. And the eighth maker joining Justify That. Mike 10 coming at the pair. Then Magical Pearl, Glamouse. Southern Speed from well back, but she's still got some work to do. The Boulder Light 10 ran to the lead here from the eighth maker. Justify That. Here's Southern Speed though. Uh, too good for them. Simple as that. Southern Speed moved up, took the lead from the eighth maker, Light Tan Bagman. My Bentley running a race, but Southern Speed, class with a capital C. Big day for the stable. Three for McDonald and Glewison. Beats my Bentley, Bagman third. Close up the eighth maker. Uh, then justify that, Glamouse, the Realia, uh, behind the... Uh, too good for them, uh, and she's on track again, uh, full field cup-wise, and maybe uh, top flight wise and... Yeah, you like to say you're more Bentley, you'd be be concerned. But her races, but we know how good she is. That's the beauty of Southern Speed. She was going to win like this. It was really a matter of handling the conditions because it was a slow track and a little bit choppy there yesterday. She got through it well, but, and she's right on target for her uh, goals over here in Melbourne. And that's taking our track there, which makes uh, very much uh, on based on them. So any of those who came from back, I've never seen horses as good as them uh, in our stable. So she's the best. She's the best you've trained. She's the best I've trained, yeah. She'll go to the Maccabee Diva in a fortnight uh, and follow probably the same path as she went last year um, to the, um, you know, to the Underwood and then to the Turnbull and, and to the Caulfield Cup, provided her weight's OK. Beautiful. Underwood, Turnbull. It was great yesterday and last night she was crowned the South Australian champion racehorse of the year. No surprises there, I suppose. Look out, Melbourne, she's on her way. Yeah, the reigning Caulfield Cup champ um, back in business had classes and classes on the opposition there. He got off the bit mid-race, but they yeah, rounded him in there um, to beat my Bentley. Um, so maybe we can pour some cold water in the form. I don't think so, because she won by such a margin. Uh, she just beat off the pack there and made them look, look second rate, which they probably are. Well, well done to you, Matt Neilman. Dot AU, as it stands right now, Green Moon resumes next week. Marwingo goes to the Maccabi Diva. It's down to barrier trial at Cranbourne tomorrow. December draw goes to the Maccabi Diva. And as we know, horses like Red Cado and Quest for Peace that we showed earlier, Quest for Peace definitely goes to the, the uh, Caulfield Cup. All of up in a Cox Plate. This is the latest market as it stands uh, after a day's racing for the Wait for Age Championship. As I say, Moore Joyce is going to barry a trial on Tuesday. Hero, the stable mate, uh, set to resume next week. Moshin resumes uh, just under a fortnight in Bobby Lewis. Let's go to Hastings. This is the McPhee Challenge, the Wait Parade, the Group 1 race. And, wow, what a field they have here uh, assembled because uh, they've got some of their best Group 1 performers. Uh, Mufasa, we know he is the favourite round, $3.60 on the tote. But others, as I mentioned, Ocean Park, he's first up today. Fritzy Boy, he's remarkable, of course. So the food on him, settles to the Mixing now. I am Sam, last out of the gate. Sartbeek goes back. He's remarkable innovation. All go back as well. As too does Joseph Pena. Mufasa bounded out of the gate. Kimasabi's taking him on. Right there, Fritzy Boy, the ombre. Fleur de Lune's going to posse up just in behind the speed timekeeper around Baby Guinness Green Supreme. And I am Sam gets underneath of those three runners. The next, just an excuse, followed through by Ocean Park. Tuling Zabel. And here, Kimasabi works to the lead. Mufasa's second. He'll pop off the aluminium now, and then Fritzy Boy, timekeeper wider out, then Fleur de Lune behind these as they run down the side. I am Sam getting right up on the inside, the ombre, Baby Guinness getting a card under the race, Green Supreme behind her, and then Ocean Park on the inside. Just an excuse further away, Xanadu runs on now with Joseph Pena, Artboot Innovation, and he's remarkable last as they swing. Kimasabi, Mufasa whips up on the outside and takes over. Timekeeper after him, Baby Guinness, and just an excuse to the outside, and then Green Supreme, Mufasa, the leader. He's a length in front, just an excuse. It's starting to come out and after he hits the lead.
Christian Clark has got it from Zlanov and just an excuse. Then I wouldn't be sure renovation time. Keep it, Tracy Peer. I am Sam. Move faster behind these runners. The next one then has been the ombre Kim at eight. Number 10, Ocean Park. Brilliant on the inside rail. I want. Well, the horse was scratched on the morning of the Sydney Derby earlier this year. Uh, Gary Hennessy took him back to New Zealand. He was ridden for luck yesterday by Lisa Orcris, but it was a very impressive win. He comes to Melbourne now. The Underwood Stakes will be Ocean Park's next run. And uh, talking with... Noted there by Father Brendan Dillon. OK, they're in the yard here for the running of uh, race four. Well said too, Father. Uh, uh, race four and the big go here. Lee Dow. Um, any concerns anyone's had about this being... Uh, just to wait track, the punters have said, Well, I took the 280 anyway, and now it's odds on. Number one's underestimation, uh, seven and three, ten by seven, Sham Express. Yeah. So there's about four or five to uh, move along. Lady of Herod's favorite, 210 and a dollar four on the chat. Now, the lead L jumped fairly. Uh, Force Command got away well, going for an early lead, but now Elite L drives on and goes to the front. Lady of Harrods is up there in third placing, closely followed by Cobain and the Red Colours, underestimation going through on the rails. A length, if I could, Amarino, and they're followed then by uh, Fairway back along the inside is about square. And then came Sheer Talent, Sham Express towards the end, and Lady of Harrods had the lead. Force Command at the 600 is a half length away second from underestimation, Elite L. Half a length away then, Cabay on the outside from back behind those Amarino around If I Could and about square on the rails when they swing towards the turn where it's Lady of Harrods in front running on as a lead L. Force Command's under pressure, dropping out underestimation through to third the rail. Uh, back behind them If I Could and then came Cabayan. But it's Lady of Harrods past the 200. Two lengths on a lead L who's battling away to try and reel in this winner. She's not getting there. Lady of Harrods in front. Sham Express and Cabayan are starting into close. Lady of Harrods desperately tied, hangs on, and Lady of Harrods wins from Cabayan and Sham Express, and the lead L close up. Then Sheer Talent followed about square, if I could, a real blanket finish to this, just behind those horses going over the speed. Win here for uh, Lady of Harrods. You can't see me, Michael Walker, when you see him there. Gee, Cabayan, what a strange run it was. Uh, didn't look like comfortable getting around the Caulfield corners here, but it's uh, got into second, and Sham Express, the eye catcher, no excuse, Elite Al, perfect spot, didn't quicken down on the firm. It's 33, 50 and 7, even. it's an amazing, it's one hiccup run, and the horse goes way out the gate in the market, Cabane 160 and Sham Express 290. Quite highly strung, uh, she just wants to get there. I reckon uh, Johnny Cena picked it up off Talladega Nights, but give it to us. <laughs> He's got a game. Richie, I know you're a big fan of John Cena's work on WWE, but I reckon Johnny Cena pinched it off Talladega Nights. That's what Michael reckons anyway. Yeah, the Invisible Man. Uh, look, he's a... Certainly was, uh, although they, they, they just... It wasn't a contest. They, they, she got a, a soft lead. They just handed it to her and they forgot about her. She sprinted off the bend. She rattled off a, a final sectional there and give the horses behind her no hope. Cabayan was fantastic. I mean, he's more of a mild type of horse. He's... He's going to be competitive and whatever gay runs him in, maybe the Golden Rose. Um, arguably the run of the day here, out wide. Look at this. In a slowly run race, in the pink hat, Sham Express. What a performance this is. Uh, considering how the race was run, this horse I remember being a leader last preparation, and he's, he's pulled his head off there running last. And to finish off like that, there's a lot of merit in that performance. Put him in your black book, Sham Express. No, I'm not sure about the race. I, you know, when, when you get horses... Sort of our feature race, New Zealand Bloodstock, Thoroughbred uh, uh, New Zealand Bloodstock, Memsey Stakes this afternoon, and good moves coming for uh, Lucky Grey here, the WA star, and Sincero. But a heap of runs we want, uh, we want to look for here, horses. There's plenty of money for both Sincero and Lucky Grey. Second leg of the New Zealand bus. Let's go to Greg Miles for the running of this year's NZB, uh, Memsey Stakes. Lucky Grey moved up into his place. Favourites for about... Set and racing now. Starters caught them pretty well with Sin's hero bounding out. Happy trails way very quickly. He wants the lead in the early part, and Mr. Milton drives through as well. And Heart of Dreams came over from the outside, and he's going towards the front as well, so they all want a bit of the lead now. And the Lucky Gray's gone back. He's about third or fourth last. Heart of Dreams at the 1,000 is the leader. Voila, each is up there two links away. Second from Mr. Milton. Happy trails. One further back, Sincero fifth. 
Followed then by second effort. Three lengths further back in the field then as Eagle Falls Wall Street and one and a half rekindled interest. Know what down on the rail and then came my lucky day out wide. One to Lucky Grey and he's being followed then by Green Moon Midas Touch and Sanagas's last. At the 600, Heart of Dreams, three quarters, Vada Ichi, Mr. Milton. Happy Trails, fourth, one, Sincero, followed by second effort, two lengths further back as Wall Street. Being followed, Eagle Falls, here comes Lucky Grey around the outside, followed by Malucky Day and rekindled interest back behind these horses into the straight Heart of Dreams with Vada Ichi, who's running on and down the outside now. Happy Trails, Sincero and second effort, peel to the outside. Happy Trails, race to Mr. Milton. Mr. Milton, Happy Trails with Sincero. Joining in now, Sincero let down with a beautiful run inside the hundred. King's Eye and Sincero came clear to beat Happy Trails by two weeks. Second ever will grab third from Mr. Milton. Getting home home at Green Moon, a lovely run too. Followed then by Wall Street, Vila Ichi. Just behind those horses, then the lucky day, not far away with rekindled interest and know what heart of dreams, Sanagas. Lucky Grey didn't come on to the finish and they were followed well back in the field. To class there for Sincero, kicks off his Melbourne campaign, perhaps aimed at taking on Piero in the Cox Plate in Grey. So on the end, the soft win, Rogers uh, knew what he had there, just peel off the back, run fifth in running and nails happy trail. Second effort, very brave, no run on from the back, got it wrong with... Uh, Lucky Grey going too far back. That was never going to work. 460 to 390 yet and never in the hunt. 380 to 360 the winner. Soft kill first up and there looks to be plenty of upside. Wouldn't it be? Exactly, Bruce. He's been nearly 12 months back in the winner's circle, but, mate, he's going super loss and, well, I love him. Can't believe it. Yeah. I know how good he's been to you, the owners. He's paid 380 and 180. The first running double for this quarter, he won into three. He's paid $7.70. What you want? third from Mr. Milton. The horse is only one. What's it? May cost eight thousand. Yep, eight thousand. One uh, closing in now on uh, one point eight million. It's a great story for Steve Farley and all his owners, and they were there yesterday with the Sincero ties on a dominant victory. In the end of a race, where you're looking for great runs here, obviously Green Moon, obviously the Lucky Day, and from nine, a Santa Guess at the back running third last. Brilliant, but. The Shark, the winner, Senate, the Sincero, where's he fit on route towards the Cox Plate? It's a good question because we've sort of had that question mark over him at a middle distance in the past, but Pete Farley has said that he thinks that his five-year-old season will be his best and his pedigree also suggests that that might be the case. Just a terrific ride, I thought, yesterday mm. for Michael Rod. No, no mistakes, was there? You know, he, he the right trail. He had the beautiful barrier to get that run. He made sure out of the gates that he was positive, so he did get that run. And then on the corner, forced his way out wider to get that clear room. He is a momentum horse and he needs to build up and then let go and, and run away from the field. It's exactly what he did. Terrific ride. As you mentioned, looking forward from this race, start from the back end. You know, Sanagas was great. I thought Wala Ichi was good at the front and then staying on late. Green Moon, nobody missed that run. Well, you knew that Green Moon was in trouble as a winning chance when they announced early in the day the horse was going back. And they said, we've got a long campaign ahead of us, both to Nick Williams' pre-race. You just had a sense that if it won, good as gold. Yeah. Yeah, if it doesn't, it runs well, you're on to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If you like him for the Caulfield Cup, or even perhaps the Hooks Plate is in that market too. I suggest they'd probably go handicapping yeah. because looking at his record, it protected his handicap a little. Mm -hmm. He got around Caulfield a lot better. Now, I saw his run there in the Caulfield Stakes last year, uh, and he got lost coming around the turn. Yeah. Yesterday, he tracked a lot better, and I think that campaign there last year is going to stand him in good stead. No, a 60 favourite, and it was a dominant win. And as Michael said, it looks like he has a very exciting spring ahead. His trainer, Steve Farley, is joining us on Brisbane um, Sydney Carnival before I come to Melbourne last year. So hence the reason we've sort of changed a little bit of the tack this year and just sort of focused ourselves for the spring. So. Russia, he's uh, he's got a magnificent first up record. He's I think he's five from seven now, isn't he? And... Uh, is he a horse you, you want to keep a little on the fresh side? Does he do his best when he when he's a little fresh? Uh, yeah, the, yes, probably uh, right there, Richard. Um, that's sort of why we're looking to give him three weeks between his first up run now to the Underwood and uh, then three weeks into the Caulfield Stakes. So we're just going to try and keep him a little bit on the fresh side and, and just see if that works too. And Steve Michael was more than happy to come and jump on him mm -hmm. for me. So, mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, he's got amazing statistics. It's almost like he's... Won 12 races now, yes, on 11 different tracks. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? So, back to Sincero. Lucky Gray, I think the rider reported he was coming to the end of his preparation. Obviously, he's felt the, the effects of that 
hard run on a wet track last time when he was ridden out of his comfort zone. That wasn't the real lucky grey yesterday. Look, Happy Trails, he's, he's come back big time. He's second up here in wait for age. He's, he's, a, he's a horse that's a force to be reckoned with. There's no doubt about it. I think the two runs in the race were definitely Green Moon and Malucky Day. Uh, they, were, they were both sensational as far as the staying races come up in the spring. They were the, the two real eye catches. I can add to that because um, Green Moon ran the fastest last 200 metres and the fastest last 400 metres, faster than the winner. But he was giving the winner, yeah. you know, eight lengths start and uh, ran him down to about three or four. But it was a, they rode him back yesterday. I'm sure it's because they want him to race a different style than what they've, He's perhaps been looking to race before where he's sat up on pace, teaching him to race back in the field for later so? races. Or do you think it's more so saying, well, we don't want to gut bust him pushing him up on the, on the speed in a sprint of, race? Could be a bit of both. But, but you know, it'll be handy. It'll add another string to his bow if he can settle back in a field and finish off because it just gives him another option. Look, I'd be delighted with him if I was... Yeah. If he was mine, I'd be absolutely delighted with Green Moon right where he is. All right, so they'll have to stay tuned. Piero comes back next and all too hard in the run for the rose. Feature race on the program, and this is always a great feature in the spring. It is the run to the rose, not the golden rose, but these horses, they are worth a fortune. Some of these colts in this race. Piero, the unbeaten golden slipper, triple crown winning champion, two-year-old. He's $1.75 in from $1.85, 440 all too hard and $7. Uh, he's got plenty of condition to work off him. Uh, she's looking at a cox plate, this preparation. We know how good he is. There's no doubt about that. And he's been heavily backed in the past 72 hours. He's the horse to beat, and you know he's going to improve, but, geez, winners are winners. Oh, absolutely. Number two is all too hard. He's been on his toes. He's been mouthing the bit. He's looking a slight bit anxious, but he's ready to go. You can see that. He looks in great condition from the Hawks team. The champ. Number one, Piero, uh, 1-800-007-23. It's the heavily back sporting bet market mover. It's shorter on the giddy goats, Caroline. Uh, a lot shorter right across the board Here on the three totes. 185 into 160 here on track. And this Up is... Up on, uh, on how he came back, this preparation, which we heard, if they can get this group race and go on to further glory in the spring. Back to start. And Asher can break very fast and went the early lead. Now, all too hard jumped out reasonably well for him today. He's back about second last, but going up on the rail. Asher can lead from your song. Piero running third. He's went off the rail in that spot. Then all too hard is trying to push out off the fence to try and get on his back. Then Epilip on the outside and back last of all as they settle down is Ninth Legion. They run to the 800. Place is pretty moderate. And the leader Asher can lead by three quarters. Piero is second. Your song third on the rail. Epilip got shunted out three wide, so all too hard's gone up in the middle. He's right on the back of Piero and Ninth Legion back last of all. Coming for home, 500 to run. Piero moving up to Ashikan. He's almost on level terms. A neck away on the outside, Epilip. Then your song, all too hard, ridden along behind them. And Ninth Legion coming down the outside. So this unbeaten record goes on the line again with Piero. He's in front as they draw to the 250. Your song on the fence, then all too hard. Ninth Legion down the outside and Epilip. Now Nash sits down to ride him out, Piero. He gives him a crack with the whip. He's holding him safely at bay. What a great cull he is. He beat your song. Third to three-way go. All too hard, Epilip, and on the outside, Night Legion and Asher can finish last of all. That was sensational. He is now seven from seven, Piero. That was absolutely dominant. The thing with this horse, he just relaxes as his side did. Lonro Nash Rawilla just urging him on just in stakes winner. He is unbeaten seven from seven. And it will be interesting to see if Gay is tempted to stay with the goal. After the dictionary to find new words to describe how good he is. Well, you have to practice. I can see that after the last sentence you gave me. You've just seen an outstanding, outstanding cult. He's Australasia's best cult by so far. It's not funny. And they've never given him the recognition. Today was his biggest test because I had a slightly lesser time to get him ready in. But I thought, I'm not going to start until I know I can absolutely wipe the floor with him. But I was a bit nervous even about it today. I've never seen you nervous before. Gay, now, it's been on record. You th you're going to miss the Sydney and go to Melbourne. Surely a fortnight's time. There's only $1 million race in the spring. It's called the, the Bordley Wines Golden Rose. Well, that's quite correct. But I've got the horse for that. You saw him run in Melbourne today. Of course, Gay's talking about Cabayan, who was most unlucky not winning in Melbourne. The three-way go. All too hard, Epilip, and on the outside, Knightley. A different class to them, Piero. The two-year-old comes back uh, against the jinx. Perhaps what jinx, uh, Piero? No trained performance here by Gay. She's basically trained this horse in public. She was uh, telling everyone, uh, as she so often does, what was the uh, program for, for Piero to get him right. He know the race is fit. He went the race is fit. He uh, was a, a clear class above the opposition there. The sectional times will tell you that, Richard. Um, 
I think what uh, all seeing's believing, you know how good he is. Most definitely. And uh, I even said yesterday in the preview, the, the last three, three weeks that we've seen him come to the exhibition gallop and come to race day, you've seen that improvement each week in him, Mark, yet he still got, I, I don't think he was anywhere near as big as he was when he won the, when we won first. Silver Slipper, yeah. Won the Silver Slipper. But we've got a whole new preparation and Gage gearing this whole preparation towards a mile and a quarter. But this was a dominant win. He was never going to lose this race at any stage. And uh, as you said, like he'd improved dramatically even from that gallop last week. In the space of seven days, um, he'd looked much better in the coat. I don't know what's going to beat him because uh, he's a freak. There's nothing in Melbourne that can beat him. We saw a couple of nice horses emerge yesterday in the McNeil, but what else is going to get near him in a guineas? Well, especially in the spring too, uh, Richard, when we've lost the Cox Plate market, uh, Gay and Gay at the top there. Machine we'll see next week. Sincero's obviously on song. We'll talk about it. Ocean Park won in New Zealand yesterday, Group 1. Uh, Green Moon probably on a Cups campaign there, but uh, it's the early shaping there. But uh, luck. I've got no, I've got no doubt uh, all too hard. I, I, he's not as being honest. He's not as good as what we first thought he was, but he's still a very good goal. And I think he's a victim to a small field. I think if you get a big field and a golden rose like the year the Turak Prof win, then I, I think you might see the best of all too hard. And I'm pretty sure that looking for the market for the Caulfield Guineas last night, Gay's got the first, second, and third favourites. There they are, Cabane and Prosir, who we'll talk about shortly. But yeah, I'm going out there. Sham Express. There you go. Sorry, Sham Express. And we'll claim psychic mix at one here the other day. Claiming psychic mix. <laughs> well, that's it. Uh, the Caulfield is uh, amazing. Two year old campaign. He's now seven out of seven, Ronnie Piero, in for a big spring. He's an outstanding horse, isn't he? He's a champion two year old, and now he possibly is going to be a champion three year old. As soon as those blinkers went on him for the first time this preparation, he just charged around that, that yard when he paraded yesterday. He was so focused. Look at him pin the, those ears back. He knows he's in a race when those blinkers go on and nothing will go past him. He's just uh, got a tremendous will to win. And uh, look, there was a, a few doubters coming into yesterday's meeting, but uh, look, he, he proved them all wrong. Um, the pack behind him, they're all good colts and there's not much between them. It's just run of the race stuff here. Your song, was he's really good. He's look, nothing wanted the fence all day, and he stayed on the fence, so I think we can give him a double tick there. You know, these horses are all too hard. Look, he, 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 I warned you about him last week. Richard poo-pooed me, but um, he's a bit of a softy. He's a bit of a softy all too hard, he, not only in condition, in the mind as well, um, although I'm not ruling him out because he's got the master touch of John Hawkes because John Hawkes is a master at producing a horse on the day. Really and this horse... What she comment that is. What do you mean? You're, you're the a, one that, you're the one that a, had a go at me when I said... You're having a little bit each way there, aren't you? Well, just, I, I am. You've got a few horse. agendas you've got to protect there or no, something? Not no, not at all. No, not at all. No. I, 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 I'm not ruling him out when he gets in a a race with a, a proper race where they go 100 mile an hour and he gets last look at them. You're that doesn't group, happen often enough you're for horses like that. You reckon that if that happens? Given the right conditions, yes. You'd still think he's a group one horse? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm just the question whether he is now. No, well, well I'm, I'm not... Yeah, you he's know, not on as that... dominant as Piero. Piero no, just look, stands you know, alone. Piero's standing, he's the champion. I don't know what Gay's talking about that people don't give him recognition. I've never heard anyone say anything but he's the champion, two-year-old, and he's the best three-year-old so far. Um, if we weren't... If, if All Too Hard wasn't a million-dollar yearling and wasn't related to the, the horse good that he is, you wouldn't be talking about him at all. You wouldn't hear, you'd say, oh, you're nice running around third. And, and that's about it. Now, he's got to prove it. Honestly, on top, uh, he really is a cracking type, this bloke, and they look really well. He was never on his toes, but uh, I think he's just here for a... Phil Guineas after winning the Ming Dynasty, and here's Summerand at $3.40, just ahead of Toy Danny, four sixty. In Well, he's only won a Hawkesbury Maiden, and then he was beaten here the other day. He opened very short at two twenty. They got the blinkers. They're off and racing, and Proverb out wide jumped out well. Catcher and Limes came out very quickly. And Sue Moran is now starting to split them and stride through to take the lead. So Sue Moran went to the front and Lenny near enough to second last on the rails. Trophies on the outside of that group three wide. Toydini just dropping the bit at that point and back last of all proverb. It's Sue Moran in front as they near the home turn. 4.50 out. Lead from on the outside of a Tatra and then Rowie followed by Limes poised behind the leaders. Then Magic Sharp followed by Honorius and on the outside of those is strength. But Tatra moved up to Sue Moran and got on level terms as they make 
make the run for home. It's Tatra putting its head in front from Sumeran. Then Lowy followed by Honorius. Limes is dropping out of it. It's Tatra on the outside. Just in front getting away from Sumeran. Proverb is starting to dive up on the fence out after the stable mate. And Proverb lunged and they hit the line. There's nothing in that. A real head bobbing finish. It's Tatra on the outside and Proverb who dived on the inside. Honorius got third. Then Sumeran and Rowey followed by Toy Dini who didn't travel. And then came Strength and Trophies to go. Okay, so all these horses, uh, certainly horses to follow. And uh, Rowey in. Two there, Tatra and Good for Camera Plover. Outstanding. Uh, first up from back near the inside. Uh, so Miranda, another cop. Club Chelmsford Stakes here at Warwick Farm. I can tell you $3.20 for Secret Admirer, the Epsom and Flight Stakes winner. Just ahead of $6.50, some pin, any pin, and eight fifty for Dan Lee. The big punters are really playing on. La Masserie and Secret Admirer, and the four's the market mover. Okay, number four, La Masserie for the Tattersalls Club. Chelmsford Stakes, number four, La Masserie, $6 to four sixty. dollars You'd probably expect him to... End up near the tail early on and then try and sweep home late. Any pin it going up and Ginga Dude in the middle. Then the Malls Creek settling on the speed in four spot, followed by Dan Lee, who races close fifth on the rail. Then the two to second admirers, they start to string out, followed by Lamasri and Polish Knight and Lights of Heaven halfway mark and some pin on my Ginga Dude who's second Centennial Park, tucked away in a good spot third. About two to Dan Lee, followed by Malls Creek and Secret Admirer. Then Lamasri is back third last, but should be suited by the pace up front and then Polish Knight and Lights of Heaven back last of all. At the halfway mark and some pin any pin led and broke the field up. Led by a length and a quarter Ginga Dude. Centennial Park next Dan Lee fourth on the outside. Secret Admirer has gone up inside Malls Creek to share fifth and then two and a half to Lammas three. Polish Knight's off the bit and Lights of Heaven a long way back as they run to the 450 and some pin any pin led from a Ginga Dude. Dan Lee's about to take into the outside and then came further back Centennial Park and Secret Admirer coming across heels into the straight and Dan Lee's out after Sumpin any pin. Dan Lee moved up in the centre of the track to get to Sumpin any pin and then Secret Admirer followed by Centennial Park but Dan Lee broke away with 150 to go. Secret Admirer trying to wear it down but this old war horse is in front Dan Lee and he's going to do it again. Dan Lee beat Secret Admirer Lammas got third then Sumpin any pin and Moore's Creek from Ginga Dude and then Polish Knight followed by Centennial Park and Lights of Heaven never passed a runner. Oh, he's won four group ones. He's now won at Chelmsford as well. Dan Lee for Hugh Bowman and Chris Waller. He's held off secret admirer of the match. Wednesday, Carolina, Canterbury Park with Dean Pettit. He read me, he read me the prices that Glenn Munsey had sent through. I said $7.50. I said, they're kidding. It'll start $3.80. It started $8.50. But he's won. He's come back in so such good order. In... Yeah, it sure is a uh, very special horse to us. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm getting better, but uh, he's been with us a long time. He had a little throw. You were boy at this preparation. A long time. He had a little throw. You were boy at this preparation. You've been saying, I know he's nine, but he, he seems to be better than he has been the last few years. Yeah, no, he just pounces on and off the tracks in the morning and and for our vets and, and the owners for for backing uh, their confidence and getting the job done. Mate, that's a, this is going to be one of the, in Sydney, the best form races going forward. Where do we go with him now? George Main, two weeks, perfect race for him. He's going to do it again. Dan Lee beat Secret Admirer. Lammas Ree got third. Fantastic. Well, a great result for Huey Bowman on a, a, an important day for him or recognising his grandfather, Roger Watton. Roger Watton. Uh, Dan Lee, uh, as I said, ran the Maccabi Diva two years ago this day. I think, uh, Rich, first group one for, for Chris, was it, when he won the one at Looney Valley on the Monocato? Uh, the first group one was uh, Triple Honor winning uh, the Doncaster with Bossy on board, 51 and a half, beating Casino Prince. was a tad unlucky. Um, wasn't it great to see Dan Lee back? I know that the connections, the Leonard's uh, who own this gallop, not being a, a genius after the race, he seemed luxurious odds compared, uh, thinking that that was the right form race last time out, Mark. And um, he's a miler. I think a mile is his perfect trip now that he's a nine-year-old. I know it's only his second win at the mile, but geez. A gun ride, good training effort, and it all worked out. Well, the two weight for age class mileage stood out here. They had a, a couple of lengths on Lamasery, who was a great run. This horse is still underdone. The fact that they ran along at a little bit of pace there, him only second up, still with a bit of a belly on him. I still thought that was an outstanding run from Lamasery if you get him in a handicap. And Clashen, he's been a terrific old warrior. He's won four group ones. Great training performance. Fantastic. You wouldn't think a nine, nine year old could improve, uh, but just that little tinkering with that little wind operation that he has, he, he looks in two runs back as good as ever. He's in good shape. He's a happy horse. I've never seen 
anyone ride him that close before. Bowman put him in the 1-1. One, one. She's a great judge of speed, this Bowman. Um, there's a couple of races there yesterday. He he just looks so in a uh, secret admirer. Coach just starting to fall out. Maybe it might be the Epsom. Uh, could be well be her race. Lemistry was okay. Like, he's second up there after such a long break. And he got in that little duel out of the barrier there. Um, Abdullah and Robel were, were into each other there. I don't know what was happening there. But And, look, of the others, I thought, a horse called Maul's Creek. Look out for him in a handicap listed group three sort of scandal. And that's from another of the features of the day. This is the Coolmore Furious Stakes part of the Princess Series for the three-year-old fillies, $3.70. In from 380s, number five, May Dung, 480. In fact, $5 into 420 for number four, Jade Marauder, the main ones in the market here on course. Let's get to the other. Market mover, Carol, along with Australia's biggest. Back into 420, so she's well in commission number four as well. So May Dung 3.8. And uh, coming out quite well was doubtfully May Dung stepped out of the stalls. Okay, so did Flying Stitchell out wide. And uh, down near the inside, Single Style is also right up there. So as they sort their order out, Single Style and Flying Stitchell led from doubtfully and then Chow, followed by Roll the Bones. May Dung gets back to midfield. Two making a trio of horses and then came Calamba and Dear Demi. Jay Marauder still at the back of the field on the outside of the Kiwi Pussy Willow. 600 out. Single Style the leader. That is about a half a length in front of Flying Stitzel and then Chow, followed by Roll the Bones and doubtfully May Dung edging up around the outside and then further back to Demi getting off the inside and Jade Marauder picking up ground around the home turn and Flying Stitzel went up and got level with single style then on the outside Chow, May Dung's ready to pounce, Dear Demi and Jade Marauder coming down the outside, it's May Dung in the centre, moving up with Dear Demi and now on the outside Jade Marauder is running on, Dear Demi stuck ahead in front, Jade Marauder trying to get to win and then May Dung but Dear Demi's holding them and Dear Demi beat May Dung and Jade Marauder then about four or five to Flying Snitzel followed by Doubtfully and Chow and then uh, coming in behind them single shots. They will be shouting a bath in South Africa and uh, a granddaughter this one of Merlin. What a champion two year old she was. The Golden Slipper winner and uh, the granddam there. Well the great granddam bold from. I'll close it with the fillies and this looks a real oaks type filly uh, for, for Singo uh, Rich and the further she got into the race. She, she doesn't quicken much but she she lengthens out like a real staying type, doesn't she? Well, just if I can break in there, um, uh, this horse looked awful before the race. Not a knock on Clary, but she looked big and sweated uh, first up, Richard, and she looked that again yesterday. Just looking at the parade before the race, you would say you'd put a line through her, yet she still had the class to come through and win the race. She ran second to Piero in the Champagne, and uh, Clary's talking about uh, bypassing the Oaks or maybe going to the Derby and then the Oaks uh, with her. He's got such an opinion of her. And it just goes to show you how good Nikita is because she had a second start absolutely played with this trio and they were a mile in front of the rest of the day, exactly. uh, yesterday. And uh, Nikita will go to the, you know, the Boardley Wines Golden Rose next week. Jade Marauder, I reckon her run come to an end at the 150. Yeah. May Dung was just left in front. Throw uh, in the champagne and Richard Schill, you'd expect to continue to improve. Yes, I think, I think you've got to look at all these fillies and say, well, you know, let, let's hope that they, they can run the trips that they'll need to run. Because this was uh, Silver Shadow Mark II without Nikita. Uh, you know, I think you run Nikita in this field, she cleans them up again, and pretty easily. And we don't start, we're not talking. Dear Demi, she has improved with her first run, and she does look like she might get a bit further. And, you know, she'll be very competitive in these three-year-old fillies races, Ronnie. Yeah, look, I must say, I've never sort of been in Dear Demi's corner. She's never been in my stable. She is now. She is now. She, she looks like she has more scope for improvement than most of that field. She's only second up there. She's already for three-year-olds and upwards. The favourite, the great sprinter, Rain Affair, $1.45 into $1.40. Just got order on the tote. And in the ring, one forty-five for Rain Affair. Tiger Tees is now firmed again into $5. So six fifty into $5. And that has... They're off. And Tiger T sprung out the best and led from Rain Affair is going through to tackle it for the lead just after the start. And then the satin shoes settling underneath them from aerobatics and then Atomic Force misses a masses and St. Hood's about two away last of all. Rain Affair stroke clear now, led by three quarters. Tiger T's at the 800. Satin shoes running third. Aerobatics next, misses a masses starting to edge up three wide. And then Atomic Force is back on the fence, second last, and St. Hood is back last of all. As they near the home turn and Rain Affair 
fair steering away from the inside lead from Saturn Shoes has gone through to second on the rail. Tiger T's third, and they're about two lengths in front of Aerobatics. Mrs. Anassas outside in. Atomic Force is second last, and St. Hood at the rear. Rain Affair in front, but he's under a bit of pressure. Saturn Shoes went through on the inside. In fact, Rain Affair might be in trouble here, and Tiger T's raced up on the outside. Mrs. Anassas coming down the outside, but Tiger T is raced away with 150 to go from Saturn Shoes and Mrs. Anassas and Tiger T's. Tiger T's beat Mrs. Anassas. Third home, Saturn Shoes, Rain Affair fourth, and then Aerobatics, Atomic Force, and St. Hood at the back of the field. Well, the stable mate upsets the hot pot Tiger T's. As you heard Joe Bryant say, he's pretty he's pretty smart. He's now on nine of uh, 13. Tiger T's, there's Rain Affair, then the short price favourite. Five, nine, eight, and two are the numbers. Rain Affair finishing officially fourth. Tiger, oh, Tiger T's, he's a half brother. To Super Easy, the unbeaten superstar in uh, Singapore. Been a good producing man at uh, par four. I'm sure we'll hear more about that on th Tuesday night with Caroline and Tara. With, uh, we'll see good. He's won nine out of 13, but the complete flop of uh, Rain Affair, Rich. And no real, uh, no real answer to it. Well, the real answer is that um, something drastic would have to happen if he's going to be competitive in either sprint races. Um, like I said, geez, you asked Joe Pride the hard questions. I said, I want to make start. Couldn't get away from them when it wanted to. Maybe the hard preparations that it's had previously have come to come back. Maybe. He did have a bit of a long campaign. Like... Quite surprised. Yeah, certainly. He resumed there and more was expected, obviously, being a dollar forty favourite, Rain Affair, and he was never travelling like a winner. He he did his thing in the yard, when, which he always does when he's fresh. He plays up, he jig jogs, he wants to half rare. But he's, he's performed doing that in the past. Um, jury's out with Rain Affair. Maybe we'll have a look at him at 1,200 next time. But what a complete racehorse this is. Tiger Tease. He... he he just switches himself off. He, he, he's a, he looks a beautiful horse to ride. I've seen him in trials where he just bows the head. You ask him to move, he moves. He's bomb-proof, isn't he? He's, he's absolutely bomb-proof. Yeah. His record says that he's bomb-proof. Yeah. I'm oh, you, you Good stakes day. One more feature race to go. And this is the tramway, a group three over 1,400 metres. And the favourite moment of change, 260 into 250, back out to 260. Num Afternoon. Said Tom the other way, out to $6.50. Tag is $41, $21 now. It's time for Peter Moody in the Slade Bloodstock. Good luck, Robert. Rangy Rangdoos in a white cap here to distinguish from uh, Sedcom, who was in a blue cap. They're both in the same yeah. Darcy Be Good began quickly with moment of change out wide. Steps in time now, starting to muster speed, and she'll rush through to take the lead. So at the end of 100, it steps in time in front. Tag us went to second, followed by Darcy Be Good, and then going up in the class. And Sedcom is right back at the tail of the field today. At the 800, steps in time, led by a length. Tag us is second, rolling pin going up along the inside. And then the wild and proud, Monton in that group as well. Moment of changes, tracking them on the outside of Darcy Be Good and Rangy Rangdool. Then Quintessential, followed by Contiki Park. And then class is class, and Sedcom's trying to get some room in the centre to wind up. Steps in time, increased its lead, coming around the turn, led by a length and a half. Tagus doing the chasing from Monton, rolling pin near the inside, and then moment of change taken to the outside. Darcy be good in the centre. Tagus went up to steps in time. Moment of change is now starting to run on strongly down the centre. Rangy Rang do further back behind them, and it's Tagus the leader from moment of change and Kentucky Park, and Tagus is in front as they draw to the post and won it, and beat Kentucky Park, and moment of change got third. Fourth's a toss up. Darcy be good there with Rangy Rangdo and Rolling Pin. Then uh, Seb Com steps in time. Monton a tag us. Seven English in it's forty six thirty and eight ninety two twenty. Kentucky Park and moment of change a dollar. Oh. Darcy be good was terrific first up. He might be signalling his back. Kentucky Park was on it. I thought Blakey Shin was asleep on Seb Com. I thought it was uh, uh, well. He settled last. Not midfield with a bit of cover where I think he's best suited. He was last. His run was very good. Moment of change to cover that little bit of ground. The bunch finished, but the pump were ring a ding ding. And Fourth's a toss up. Darcy be good. Boy. Jim Cassidy hadn't ridden for three months, but he was back in great form there at Warwick Farm. Good to see him back, too. It is, and he's a freak, Jimmy. He just bounces back, you know, after a break and like he hadn't been away. He just horses run for him. You'd have to say the favourite, a touch unlucky with no cover, moment of change. But considering the rap and, and the price he was, you could say he was a touch disappointing as well. Kentucky Park's going better than ever. And then you've got the stable mates here. Rangy Rang do perfect first up. Sedcom didn't have much luck, and uh, no, you don't luck, and uh, no, you don't want it to jump and sort of over race. You will be outside, red and black colours. Ready? 
outside of the uh, field. High Bell, Oasis Bloom begin quickly with Bianca and Rose. In the early stages, Lady Melksham's about midfield. And Kneeling pushes through at the 1200, goes to the lead narrowly from Bianca and Rose, Oasis Bloom. High Bell is fourth. Lady Melksham fifth, and she's uh, trapped out three wide there. Two links to total attraction, being followed then by Miss Artistic. About three quarters away, getting up on the inside, twilighting. Two Yosei, and they're being followed by Zarella, who's well back to the turn. In company, you say sweep towards the win, then with Benaria and back last booklet on the inside. Now, Bianca and Rose sitting on the outside of kneeling the leaders from High Belling to Wayne Lady Melksham's fourth. She's been deep the trip. In behind them, Oasis Bloom, followed then Total Attraction coming through. Miss Artistic wider as they turn, and then Total Attraction now into the straight, and it's kneeling Bianca and Rose. Lady Melksham coming at the pair of them on the outside, and then Oasis Bloom, who's in behind them from High Bell. Total Attraction's running on, and then Miss Artistic inside the 250 now, and Total Attraction's racing after Lady Melksham. She's hit the front, total attraction, then High Bell, and here's Zarella starting to come home well. Zarella's finishing all over the top of total attraction. Zarella raced to the lead, and Zarella came away and beat total attraction, or High Bell, who's flashed home to be in a photo for the minor end. Lady Melksham ran fourth, then Benaria Yose, followed by uh, Miss Artistic, and then... Out here, uh, congratulations, Sammy Island, on song today with a couple of long tries winners, including this Zarella. High Bell desperately unlucky. Lady Melksham's had a, more, a, a bit more dash than Miss Artistic. Well, artistic, as you know. Yeah, that's High Bell was unlucky. That's, uh, that's the leading obvious. But don't ignore the fact that this is a Noakes uh, runner-up derby contender from New Zealand who was first up on the seven furlongs yesterday. Very impressive for Mike. Yes, she was. She came through the same races as Miss Dane Hill Stakes. And it's all about Snitzeland here. A very short prize of bookies taken. Uh, plenty for a read, but the on-course bookies put up $1.40. Thanks very much to this filly with a, a Briggs Melbourne Spring short course ahead of her and a decision to be made later in this month from the Black Caviar owners are all here today. Maybe they're discussing it. What are they going to do with Black Caviar? This seems to be a swing. Well, and jumped okay, uh, but straight here alongside of it just gave a little bit of a bump soon after the start. Proto Proto began well. And also Psychic Mick, who's spearing up to look for the lead in the early part, and Cambiasso was showing some speed. As they settle down, Psychic Mick has the lead. Proto Proto on his inside and Cambiasso a bit deeper out. They're the three early leaders. Snitzelden getting cover in behind them early. Followed Australia next on her inside and behind them is Rosambo. Followed by Maury ridden off the pace and then Mercy Lager. And Swift Exit at the tail of the field. Down past the 600. Psychic Mick and Proto Proto sharing the lead. Cambiasso the outside. Stradia clear running the inside. Snitzelden just snooking a little bit for a run now. Ollie's searching, trying to find the way to get out of there. Maury's coming to the run down the outside. 350 metres to go. He's gone right over to the inside on the hot favourite Snitzelden where Australia had the lead. Australia in front of Snitzelden. Maury starting to run home and then Rosambo. Australia from Snitzelden and Maury up the middle of the track. Snitzelden's getting through along the inside. Driven through by Ollie. Takes the lead in the dying stages and Snitzelden too good for Australia by a neck. Three legs for Sambo third and Maury Ren fourth. Followed Mercy Lager and Swift exit. And a break then to Pronto Pronto and Psychic out to run last. The main thing is the numbers of the frame, Palace. Uh, I don't think he went all over again. And uh, Holly rode the perfect race for about the 600 when he worked out. He couldn't jump over them. And he had to wait to go to the inside. And he had to look, hello, that's Australia. The horse I've had two for two on. It's worked out okay in the end. And, uh, 400 to go, but fortunately, Ollie and Snitzel dug deep and they've got there. This year, interim dividend. Well, oh, she's great. She's a millionaire now. Uh, she comes 125000 for Steve McCann and Neil Warwick. Um, no, it has to go a good filly. Like caviar with, uh, with Neil. Out of action now. Yeah, it's a shame to see Rustambo uh, go out for a, a short break like that. So with the bleeding happening. But Snitzel, we know what she is. She's a terrific spring filly. Races like the Coolmore later on. Uh, and it's been on Derby Day. They're going to be her go. Australia, Australia, whatever you'd like to call it, I, I think we'll be keeping a very close eye on this going towards the Guineas. I think he's the best colt in Melbourne by a long stretch. Uh, you could see him in the yard before the race. He looked good, but he was just a bit short of the run. He's being set for the Guineas, remember, and he just hit the wall there the last 75 metres and allowed Snitzelin to come up on the inside. He is the horse to follow out of the race, no doubt. It's down it very well. The Group 1 Coolmore Stud Stakes beckons. Yeah, good ride, Ollie. Well done, son. It was nearly the biggest stuff up of all time. Um, 
A dollar forty favourite, and they want to change the tactics and not let the punters know. I think they were breaking out your car buckles there with hundred metres to go. It's just collected. Yeah, that all's well that ends well, but it looked nasty there for a while. Good effort, good effort. They charged home the last six hundred here. She's a good filly, and better than what what that win suggests. And this second horse is better than what we think as well. Australia, he'd had two runs, two starts for two wins and easier races. Um, look, these two singled out, and a lot. To, we know the winner's sharp and good. But this second colt, um, he may have a future. There was a first starter here, uh, a thing called Swift Exit, who comes from last, the widest runner there. Um, placed right, he can go right through his classes um, without getting too excited. But, I mean, that, that for a month... And there's Moshine. There's the Bobby Lewis, and there's Moshine as you look at her. Doesn't she look fantastic today, uh, Moshine. And some support coming for her. Shanghai Warrior, though, has been the good go all day here, even on the dry ground, and he has experienced of late... The uh, Mackay just had it confirmed that it's we're going to rock the sporting bit market further. They took longer odds than this yesterday, and they've had two separate dips at it today. So, at nice that, uh, that he won't be here for, I wouldn't think so. But that's what it's all about. Craig Williams has got that decision. Well, well that's not a decision. He's made one about doing the dinner in the court. Yeah. You're ready to go now. Stand by. Bobby Lewis, quality field. They're off. And Machine and we're going to rock both got away okay. Shanghai Warrior might have been a touch slow to move down on the inside. Free return had pinged away very quickly down on that section and had the lead. So it's free return with Shanghai Warrior leading close to the inside. Rocking four showing some speed closer to the middle of the course with Anna Bandana. And Title has come across from the outside gate and he's actually run to the lead out in the middle of the course in the orange blinkers. Lavinio and Pago Rock are right behind him. And also, we're uh, back behind those is all fried up not far away. Machine's got into a reasonable position with We're Gonna Rock immediately on her inside. She has cover behind the front runners. Followed Lavinio. Spirit of Boomer's out very wide on the course and Speediness trying to follow it home. And also making some ground one last dance. To the business end, nearing the 300 metres. Title out wide. Spirit of Boom comes at it. And then Plago Rock and Lavinio. Instinction's getting up on the inside with Art Dasham. And then Shanghai Warrior. With about 200 to go, Spirit of Boom and We're Gonna Rock with title between them. These are the three, 100 left to go. And We're Gonna Rock's hitting the line strongly with Spirit of Boom. They're down to the post and We're Gonna Rock by a hit, Spirit of Boom. Titles run third, Fiwop a big fourth. Then came one last dance, Lavinio, Speediness and Smoke and Joey was the next one over. Followed in by Blackie and then Machine who boxed on from Ardash and Pago and Jello. Well, Geldick's really made this horse. We're going to arrive when he comes back. Uh, a winner here at Flemington for Cav. First of perhaps many for him through the spring. Terrific run by uh, Spirit of Boom and uh, Tyler. Market Mover Salutes pays $7.20 on Super Tab if you're stuck with it. And... Uh, it's been a good effort from Spirit of Boom. This is another race that you'll have to... I mean, uh, would you give that extra weight on? But he, he just showed that he needed the, the put off and the top. Top's hitting the line strongly with Spirit of Boom. They're down to the post and we're going to rock by a hit, Spirit of Boom. Well, Gil, I the difference to him is a lot lighter. Uh, suggestion Michael Rod also would like to see Richie the same way, Gil, and uh, love to see the operation help him out. Spirit of Boom, uh, the family's very good straight horses. Title is, but they're all out wide. Uh, and there's a horse flying here. There's a race for it. I don't know where it is. VWAP, um, seven-year-old. He's absolutely flying, VWAP. He can do that, VWAP. He can run home in some ridiculous times, and he's certainly going well this time around. But we're going to rock. He was like that big, burly, under-18 footballer that you see in the, in the early competitions that stands out bigger and stronger than all their rivals. He beat Marconi and Winter King down the straight on debut, and everyone went, whoa, how good is this thing? To group races. And it a little bit tough in and out. He was second in the Turak last season. And you just thought, mm, he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, this boy. But the gelding has been making of him. Obviously, the autumn prep in uh, Lade was terrific. In the Goodwood, uh, runner up there. And he's coming back in great nick. And with no black caviar around in these sprints, particularly the ones down the straight, yeah. he really looms as a, as a big player. Spirit of Boom was good. But I hope you paid attention to the at his most recent run back in the autumn. He's been gelding. He's got great, uh, great fresh form. We're going to rock. Look, he's a horse that... that... He's a better horse than I thought he would be because, you know, he was a big, gawky horse and he had a bad action early on. His action's actually improved as he's got older. And I thought, oh, well, he's just a moral to break down at some stage. And he hasn't. Here he is. He's still, uh, he's still racing well. He's six years old now. His action looks better. He's just a better horse. His horse has matured. Uh, and, you know, there he goes. It was a bit 
slow early. They got a bit bunched. There was horses ran into dead ends here and couldn't get clear running. I think if you ran that race over three or four times, you know, we're going to rock. And, and, and the other place getters there, Spirit of Boom, he's a very good straight horse. Um, I think they'd probably be right up there. But you might get a whole different mix of horses just behind the placings. Some good runs there. VWAP, that's, that's two, you know, uh, black booking runs yeah, from really him. Runs, haven't uh, In unsuitable mm -hmm. races. He, he, he can be... He'll be winning nicely. And there was a horse back in the ruck there that wasn't obvious, but a horse called Blackie, uh, running to dead ends all the way down the straight as well. He, he, he'll be winning some sort of a race. Peter Moody will put him in the right. Flemington's well, cover this afternoon. Group 2, Macaiva Diva Stakes uh, coming up. A race to Dan Lee, just so brilliant there in the Chelmsford, ran in two years ago. He ran fourth. Last year's favourite in the Macaiva Diva was Lights of Heaven. Went round odds on. And just ran last in the Chelmsford. Uh, it's amazing what a few years in racing can do for you. I don't think she's a spring horse at all, lots of heaven. We've got some spring stars on show here, though, that's for sure, as we get ready for the Maccabi Diva. Here's the market on the tape. Uh, it's all pointing Managar's way from a betting point of view so far. Southern Speed comes up the tape for that, but it's been very much on the drift here. And it just continues to pour in for Managar, who was as, uh, as high as 440 bet on Thursday. And now... I'm not beginning a dollar less than that at the very, very best. Running there, it is Managar, but there were just some little words of reservation there from Pete Moody. In a program of the year, what a season uh, she had uh, for the Yarrow Valley team and uh, Greg Miles playing all the action. Here's the Maccabi team. And the starters caught them okay, and Vanagar jumped about fourth. December draw, the first one they bound out of the stalls. Dance with her got away quickly with Southern Speed. Shenzhou Steeds out wider. And just off the Managar's a billionaire second effort, Murian for a turning sufficient murderer who's gone back second last and Mawingo at the tail of the field. It's a dawdling speed early and dance with her at the 12 stage by the 1,000 metres. Behind him is second effort and then efficient out wide, murderer second last and Mawingo at the tail. Dance with her at the 800 metres, a half length in front of Shenzhou Steeds. December draw right on the back of the speed is third and Southern Speed is running fourth as they came near to the home turns. A Millionaire getting up behind the leading bunch. They're really bunched up around the turn. Managar's next as they come around the bend. That wide is efficient. And Murian's ahead of him. And Mawingo, the deepest runner, a sprint for home as they've entered the straight now, 500 to go. And moving up now, Southern Speed. Murian putting in a run. Managar trying to find a way clear. Dance with her. Shenzhou Steeds are still there. And December draws trying to squeeze up on the inside. Southern Speed at the 200 metres. Had it narrowly from December draw. Managar getting into the clear late. It's a Southern Speed with a two-link lead at 100 metres though. Southern Speed, Menegar's out. He's closing at every bound. He drives home hard. Not sure. Menegar, Southern Speed together. Mudra's run third. And just off them, December draw. And then also close up was Murian and... Uh, then came December draw over on the inside from Shenzhou Steeds, the billionaire, second effort efficient, and Mawingo. Has he got there or not? Well, he thinks so, Greg, but photo's not up. We're not confirming anything yet. Last stride. Uh, no, he's, no, he's missed. Southern Speed he's will missed. get it. The head's up. He's been a tragedy beat on oh, uh, a yeah. Moran laying all over the top of him at a vital stage. Southern Speed gets him down. Look at when you see Craig Williams where his head is. It's, it's his head down. His head's not going to help the photo much, but uh, he's thrown Southern Speed over the line. That's a tragedy. Oh. Here. I've here with uh, Managar. Uh, three over Managar. Doesn't matter how you get it, you got it. Well, just first, I was a bit worried right on the line, but um, thank goodness for Greg Miles. He called it right. And truly really right by Craig. Obviously, positive early. Uh, obviously, you leave things to Craig there. Well, we do leave them to him. He's done his homework, and uh, he, he rode it very well. I mean, he's... Uh, as I said, he's I went the way of Southern Speed first time in five meetings between that pair that Southern Speed uh, got the nod. We'll hear from uh, both the camps shortly. Uh, but Southern Speed, good there. Shark, um, slow first thousand here, 63-44. Really? some flashing sectionals. That's the point of the race we're watching now where uh, Moraine's going too good to allow uh, Managan to be pushed out the way. Exactly. You'd expect Moraine first up to perhaps maybe wander a little bit late, but I think the fact that they did go so slowly just helped that horse. They were staying in and holding the guard in his spot. But a terrific tactical ride from Craig Williams, I thought. Pace was always going to be questionable in this race when you had a horse like Dance with her, who's better known as a stayer, looking like the likely leader spring. Uh, that will really turn into, uh, into her favour. Yeah. Through the field, I thought Mudra was very good getting back. 
similar to Madagascar, who was a, a, a little bit behind that horse, still had trouble getting out. Moran, as you mentioned, was good. Retema Draw was good, poking up, poking up well, on the rails. I just peaked. They're all good, but Moingo. Moingo was very ordinary. He was blink. It was a very strange tactical decision to go back. Blinkers for the first time. Another tight finish. Terrific mare. Uh, terrific mare. She's already won a Caulfield Cup, obviously, but she presented beautifully into this race third up and, and got a lovely ride from Williams, who's got so many options this spring. Uh, he just got a rolling off that slow speed and she got the momentum up where Madagascar, you'd have to say, was desperately unlucky. Jeez, he's come up well again, Madagascar. Look at him here, trying to weave his way through. She just didn't sprint quick enough for him to get out of that pocket and Moran just lays all over, uh, all over Madagascar here and obviously tossed him the race. Uh, but take nothing away from the winner. She got the job done. Mudre was, was fantastic after a long layoff there. He's, he darts through the middle late here. Look, there's other good runs there. He just blew out there. December draw on the inside. He was going to burst through, but just first up a mile after such a long layoff. Uh, have to be concerned with Mawingo here. Um, that's not good as far as, the, uh, as, far, as far as the spring's concerned. Not a good start. No, I'd have to agree with that. There's a bit of a head scratching there. Maybe the uh, the winter racing it took its toll. It seems to maybe have done it to lights of heaven as well. But you, Managar, who's probably a bit tougher than both of them, has come back quite, you know, really well through his, his winter. Um, look, uh, uh, I'm Dower, and this is the market for the Cox Plate. Piero, the favourite over More Joyous, who resumes next week. There's Managar, a $13 chance at this stage. And Green Moon is more likely to go to the Cox Plate rather than the uh, Caulfield Cup. I think it's a while. 130. As he goes in the gates, will make him the sporting bet market mover because there's been no other action for any other runner. The sporting bet market mover will be number two, Pro 130 on the tote, 140, best of three, with 140 into 130. Well, Tommy Berry. Lovely run from the mile here at Newcastle. And they're set for the Coca Cola Spring Stakes. 1600. Favourite drawn barrier one. Stand by. And they're racing. Brazier on the inside was one of the best to begin with Mount Nebo. And they match motors in the first 100 metres, but to gliding up on the inside, Quasi. Two links away on the inside, Proverb. And at the rear of the field is Limes. Approaching the turn at the 500. Brazier held together, stacks them up. Just in front, coming around the bend from Shawano. And then Mount Nebo out three deep on the track. Trophies needs an out. So too, Proverb. Then Limes out four wide. And Sumerand is the widest. Brazier sprints up at the 250 clicked up and kicks two links in front of Mount Nebo trophies the inside then Lyons who wants to lug in a shade from Proverb but Brazier comes clear with 50 metres to go and this is over dashes away Brazier bolts in six links second close trophies I'd say just in front of Proverb then Limes Mount Nebo Zumarad and Shawano last but that was impressive In one fifth was number four, and that was Mount Nebo two five three one. Yep. That's how he won. Now, so the spring champion would that rule out the Caulfield Guineas? What? <laughs> I want to be decided still there, but uh, gee, he's going well past the spring champion. Not a contest. This one. He's a superstar. Yeah, well, he's he's very very good. He's Piero class. I had him down as a gelding there Saturday morning. The owners would have choked on their cornflakes. Um. Geez, I reckon that's a big statement, Ronnie. I'd be running him in the Caulfield Guineas. Sec good second string. That is a huge statement. He's Piero class. Piero's just defeated everything he's met. That's won by big margins, beating up horses, looking, running times. Be beating up what, though? Yeah, look, I, I understand. Beating up not much. Look at the margins. Look at the time. I understand. Look at the individual. I understand. The picture tells the story. So he's a superstar three-year-old or a superstar yeah, he, racehorse? He, he destroyed that Norzita the other day. I understand. Day. This race not far away, been the running of the Cameron Handicap, a group three race over 1,500 metres, sponsored by Pat Mac Farm, who have been sponsoring races in the uh, Hunter Valley area. Three dollars in tow, two ninety on course, money late, uh, each way odds for rolling pin, Monton, no action for Western Sydney. Stalls are back and racing. Darcy be good on the inside, jumped away well, light in the night, goes back to a clear last, rolling pin out well. With offenders on the outside, Darcy Bigood, Adnacon and Tagus behind the speed. 
from Bonton, Gadirian, Kentucky Park, Western Symbol, Wellbark spots them all and would spot the leader about eight. 600 metres to go, rolling pin by a length tag us as they quicken from offenders, Darcy Be Good. Western Symbol's done it tough, light in the night sticks to the inside, Adnacon behind it, Kentucky Park's the widest, then Monton Gadirian, rolling pin at the 300 metres, as them rolling by a length and a half to two lengths, tag us, offenders, Darcy Be Good, light in the night getting through, Kentucky Park down the outside, still with a bit of ground to make up at the 150, rolling pin, offenders wearing it down, light in the night, late, still rolling pin at the 50, light in the night with a late thrust, and rolling pin is great light in the night, offenders, and get very in a massive run, the boulder for Tagus, Kentucky Park, Edmonton, Darcy, be good, Monton, point two, a race record. She's shown plenty of faith in this galloper, light in the night, Dollar seventy defenders four seven class above them. He looks a nice stayer in the making, and he's disappointing that Mark can move a number one. That's the horse on screen, nice and relaxed with Nash and Willer aboard. I suppose for barrier two, Nash will have the option where he. This is the third leg of the quaddy. Maybe a free kick for punters with this favourite. And now they're moving in. Simon, thank you. They're moving in, moving forward for the Gold Cup. Glenn Cadamga sets and they're racing. Pretty good even line. If anything, Sate in Costa drifts back to the tail shortly after the start with French Gift and Glenn Cadam Gold. Straight into the van from Mule alone at the outside. Two lengths to Gazaguru and out deeper on the track. Racing Heart is also veering across to get to us. And French Gift is at the rear of the field, but starts a run now. French Gift won't die wondering at the 900. Glenn Cadam Gold tries to stack them up. Mule alone are in second place and there's French Gift around the outside now. Then came Racing Heart. Heart, three quarters of a length to Peel of Bells. A length Gazaguru, sixth on the inside from St. In Costa Rathera, and two and a half lengths away now. Three lengths, who's his name going backwards? Approaching the turn at the 600, and it's French Gift on the outside of Glen Canham Gold. A length away, Yule Alona, racing hard on the inside from Peel of Bells, then Gazaguru, St. In Costa Rathera, dropping away is the boulder, who's his name? They run for home in the cup at the 400. Glen Canham Gold, Rowilla hasn't moved yet from French. French Gift, Yule Alona on the outside is still there, hanging tough, and then Peel of Bells, Glen Cadam Gold at the 200, by about a long neck to Yule Alona, Peel of Bells as they sprint up at Glen Cadam Gold, accelerates 100 metres to go, two lengths in front of Peel of Bells, Gazaguru late, Glen Cadam Gold drifts out and it's home, Glen Cadam Gold the favourite wins it, by a length and a quarter Peel of Bells, and third was Gazaguru, Saint in Costa Provident for fourth from Yule Alona then Rathira Racing Heart, Prince Gift of the tempo. We've been 34 7, so that's pretty handy for a race over 2300 metres. A dollar 40 the tote. Happy days. Eight minutes to go before the running of the first leg of the quaddy here. This is a cracking race. It's the McEwen over a thousand, Bruce, and uh, gee, it's a thousand here. Let's head up to Greg Miles to call the action. A couple have been spiked at uh, the longer odds, including. Is ready on their racing? And Bell Sprinter jumped nice and evenly today. Golden Archer, I'm getting, got away well. And also beginning quickly and going for the leader, Snitsum, as they settle down. And he's ridden out to find the front ahead of Bell Sprinter. Didn't cost a lot on the rail, and I'm getting out wide. Golden Archer settled up a length and a half away, fifth. And they're followed by Platelet Stratcombe. And three lengths, Morant on the outside of Green Birdie. Snitsum had the lead going through the gap a length and a half to Bell Sprinter. One away as I'm getting, didn't cost a lot, and one Golden Archer. They're followed by Platelet, and then came Stratcombe and two lengths Morant and Green Birdie. Coming around the home turn, Snitsum by a length, Bell Sprinter second, I'm getting third. On the rail didn't cost a lot from Platelet and Golden Archer peeling out wide. Into the straight, Snitsum in front, Bell Sprinter given full board a chase and then didn't cost a lot. Platelet's out and coming and Golden Archer, Bell Sprinter's hit the front from Snitsum. I'm getting after Bell Sprinter, Bell Sprinter in front and he is back. Bell Sprinter beat Platelet up to second about a half a length away and uh, Snitsum on the rails might hold the third from Golden Archer. Just behind those getting. Great return. Uh, I'm sure uh, much relieved Jason Warren sees Bell Sprinter back to the track and back to the winner stall in absolutely sizzling time here. Just misses Miss Andretti's track record from the same race, 57-2-2. This horse has run 57-3 of a hot speed. They went the first 600 in 33-9. And as soon as he jumped him now, or many doors open up for him, where do you think you're going? 
Oh, we're going to the Manicato. Oh, we're going to the Manicato. It's been my, my goal all the way through, I think. Uh, heart of dreams. 51 out to 61, then back into 41 for Midas Touch. Linton has been 9 out to 10, and then into $8.50. The real surprise here is the lack of interest in these next two. Rekindled interest is 380 out to 4.60, and Green Moon's 350 out to 4. Elko Pop, 17 to 21. I've had a couple of little uh, nibbles at Happy Trails, but he's virtually stayed around the $6 main to 5 one. But uh, getting the clear message here that the Sporting Bet market mover is number seven, Happy Trails. Uh, the one you just heard Bossy talking about. Number seven, Happy Trails is our Sporting Bet market mover. Intriguing Darth Tan Chin Nam Stakes coming up and intriguing to run start time. The Sporting Bet market mover, as Shane just told you, is number seven. Happy to back to back wins in the race. They're racing now. And rekindle interest jumped away fairly well. Elko Pop goes back. Happy Trails and Heart of Dreams both began very quickly. Green Moon jumped away nicely. He's about fifth or sixth as they settle into stride. Scepter Party coming over to find the lead in the early stages ahead of Midas Touch, Heart of Dreams. Happy Trails is fourth and Mr. Charter's fifth. The inside, it's a really strong gallop. They're followed by Green Moon about seven up. So Scepter Party had it. Midas Touch sits right three quarters away second. Heart of Dreams two lengths away on the inside. And they're followed closely then by Happy Trails getting a nice run. And so too two lengths away is Green Moon. Ethiopia starting to make ground on the outside. Mr. Charts the fence and then rekindled interest. He's in some traffic at the moment from Sneaker Peak, Elko Pop, Linton the Grey and Tokugawa. 5.50 metres to go. Midas Touch moved up to level with Scepter Party. Happy Trails only a length and a half away. Green Moon coming on. Heart of Dreams under the whip and then Ethiopia rekindled interest under pressure and Mr. Charter then Elko Pop on the swing for home and Happy Trails raced up now to Midas Touch but Green Moon's going with Happy Trails. Re Kent Lindra started to get motoring and then Ethiopia. Green Moon raced to Happy Trails early in the straight. Then rekindled interest. Happy Trails comes back at Green Moon. Happy Trails and Green Moon. This will be a head bobber. Happy Trails, Green Moon. They hit it. Oh, not really sure there. Happy Trails and Green Moon. Very little in it. Two and a half lengths in front of rekindled interest and Linton got home strongly. Sneaker pick, Mr. Chart, Tokugawa, Ethiopia, and then Midas Touch, Agap, Elko Pop, and then came Heart of Dreams, and at the end was Scepter Party. Well, I might go back to Shane to call this uh, Green Moon outside, Happy Trails inside. Looks as though to that eye, you'll say Happy Trails. Shane, have you got the official print there? We're just having a look at it now. Inside. And the inside will get it by the barest possible margin. He's just missed Green Moon. Happy Trails will now have it onto a Cox plate now for you, Paul. Great thrill. And the numbers will be seven, five. Yeah, Dana Tan Chin Nam and onto a Cox plate now for you, Paul. Great thrill. This is unbelievable. It's a dream come true. You couldn't, you know. Everybody wants to be on a happy trail, and today we're on one. It's taken a while to get on the happiest trail, haven't you? The, the Cox plate's the goal, and now you can confirm that. Oh, you definitely go to the Cox plate now. Well, and the, the result goes your way, and now he's onto a Cox plate. You, you know what it takes to win one? Is he is he there? Is he in, is he in the mix? Oh. I don't think, I'm not sure. I don't know, I'm not sure if he can win a cox plate this horse, but uh, obviously he's he's doing a lot better this preparation than what he has in previous preparation. He's got great form around some very, very good horses, obviously, but not at Way for Age. This is obviously his first winner at Way for Age. Probably, I, I, I'd more think that the Emirates at the end of the, at the end of the car, it's a million dollar race at handicaps. That looks like a Caulfield guinea, so we're keeping the options open there. I think the Caulfield Cup's alive for Green Moon. Anyway, Happy Trails, the winner of the Dato Tan Chinam Stakes. Let's get to the yard here. There's a Venus Stock Stakes coming up, and this is a winner of the Stock Stakes too. Spirit Song. Spirit Song number two is the Sporting Bet Market Mover. It's going to be a big show race from here tomorrow, who won't shame because uh, not only... Coming up into the gates to Nick Hall, very similar colours, she and Dame Claire. Oasis Bloom lines in. Glenn Boss looking for it. They're off now. And uh, the favourite spirit song jumped away evenly. My Chikorita a bit slow. Midnight Martini got away well and so did Dash for Cash. Booklet not far away over on the rails. And Arby Ennis is sprinting forward as they go through the first couple of hundred metres. And Dash for Cash is the leader as they settle down. Dance for Cash with Midnight Martini. And Arby Ennis is going on three wide. And Blistreet is just off them settling down for Princess. 
Midnight Martini is the leader in the run to the 800, but now Oasis Bloom and the big girl strides up on the outside and goes to the lead. Arby Ennis is a length and a half away third and Dance for Cash is now fourth on the inside, followed by Bliss Street. Two lengths further back, Spirit Song working into it with Shadow McGow out wide, Booklet the rail and then Rock Princess. Then Dame Claire and My Chikorita is last by the school. Where Oasis Bloom away from the rail. Arby Ennis going up three wide. Midnight Martini the fence. A length and a half. Bliss Street under pressure. Spirit Song running on and Shadow Mago starting to work home. As they neared the turn. Still Oasis Bloom narrowly. Midnight Martini coming back well on the inside. She pokes her head in front. Then Arby Ennis. Further back is Spirit Song. It's Midnight Martini with Oasis Bloom. They're the two leaders. A length and a half. Arby Ennis. Now Spirit Song is driving home on the the inside still oasis bloom spirit song getting up on the inside to tackle it spirit song and oasis bloom oasis bloom wide out just from spirit song a length and a half shadow mago will get the third Harvey Ennis, Rock Princess, Midnight Martini, Clark. When you're hot, you're hot, G-Boss. That is three for the day, and they've absolutely crawled in that. This horse covered ground and was able to cover ground because the first thousand in uh, terribly slow, 61.7 off a 49.7 first 800. Plus, he just totally uh, summed that race up, knowing he was covering. So Collingwood. This is the Sebring Sprint, also known as the Theo Marks, but sponsored by Widenstad and their first season sire in Sebring with his first two-year-olds about to hit racetracks around Australia. The favourite here, well, it is Dystopia, around $3.80, just ahead of Fat Al, who has come in from $4.20 to $4.00, then out to $5.50 for Fast Clip. Let's get to the yard. Yeah, be next is away. So, to a Centennial Park, Fat Al, Fast Clip, and also coming forward, Rollers is Waterford Hill. The gates are back. They're off and racing Waterford Hill walked out, missed it badly by about four or five. Ambidextra and Fat Owl with the best two into stride. Dystopia hopped out well, threatened patiently at the back of the field. As they run to the 600 and Fat Owl the leader, from on the outside, Fast Clip just being niggled up a little. Dystopia's right behind the leader on the fence as they make the turn. Ambidextra coming up three wide. Further back, Tullamore, Levi's Choice and Centennial Park right down the outside. Fat Owl in front, but Ambidextra is striding up menacingly on the outside and Dystopia getting the rails run. Ambi Dexter went to Fat Al, got on level two, put its head in front, and they've run away from Dystopia. Ambi Dexter just in front, but Fat Al refuses to give in. Fat Al and Ambi Dexter. Ambi Dexter in front won it. Ambi Dexter beat Fat Al, Dystopia third. Then Centennial Park, followed by Levi's Choice, Waterford Hill, Fast Clip, and last in was Tillamore. Well, he looked the goods, and he's raced right up to it, number six. Ambi Dexter for Pete Snowden, and Karen McAvoy takes that. Quarter was a two-horse battle from the furlong home, and he got home on top. Yeah, um, he's around the dollar sixteen quote opened up at a dollar twelve, so a dollar sixteen now for the queen of the Sydney turf in more Joyce, a dollar ten on the tote. Let's get to the yard and have a look at this great race mare. As I said, eight Group One, she's won her two trials. She won this race two years ago. She's by more than ready out of the Oaks winner in Sunday Joy, and she looks an absolute treat here with her. Dave Myers leading her around. Rich, she does, Caroline. She looks terrific here, doesn't she? And uh, look, it's great to see the mare back. Great to see more joyous back, and she she does look sensational. Eight time Group One winner, and I just stand next to John Singer and look at her walk, look at her walk round. You always got a big smile when you see your favourite girl come across on the right. Odds was three hundred thousand uh, straight up, bang at a dollar thirty, and then it was two hundred thousand at a dollar twenty five. She's been a huge, huge go. Like to, to firm from a dollar thirty into a dollar sixteen where she sits now is just she's a huge go. Number two, think of it as Jerry Rock said, made a walk. Uh, compared to some of her other runners here, as I said, normally she doesn't look that great in the parade, but uh, I've got to say that's the best I've seen her today. And they're off. And uh, More Joyous jumped out about third or fourth. Miss Marks and Colorado Claire were the best out. More Joyous rushing up on the outside to take closer order. And then came Streamer back on the inside, followed by Gay's Choice, Emotional Circus, beaten to speed. Went back to second last and playing in the glass last of all. It's Miss Marks in front with More Joyous striding up on the outside to almost get level. It's a leisurely pace early on. Colorado Claire third, fighting the rider a little. And then came Streamer, who's handy on the rail. Followed a length and a half 
after Gay's Choice. A Mostel Circus back on the fence is second last. And last of all is Plain in the Glass. Inside the 600, Miss Marks in front with more Joyce on the outside. Toys to strike, only a neck away. Colorado Claire who went to the outside. Streamer's got more Joyce as back as they make the home turn. And then Gay's Choice into the straight. Miss Marks led. It's full ball. More Joyce on the outside. Nastal sits quietly. Now he shakes her up to go after Miss Marks, who's giving a bit of cheek on the inside. It's Miss Marks in front. Now more Joyce giving a crack with a whip. She goes up, hits the lead. She's a 20th win today. She's coming away. She's a class act. She beats Miss Marks. Stream right say got third from Emotional Circus. Then Colorado Clear, followed by Gay's Choice and last in Pain in the Glass. Another win for more Joyce. She resumes with the win in the Scirocco Stakes. She is back with a vengeance. Miss Marks has finished in second placing. You can see now she's actually... He was very... That's the most relaxed I've seen her ever seen a win. The one thing about you, you've had plenty of good horses over the years. You seem to still get a little bit nervous with this girl. Yeah, I thought something's going to go wrong to her. I don't know why, but that's 20 wins she's had. I've never been a strawberry boy, strawberry road. I don't think one twenty. It's an amazing record, isn't it? 20 from, from 27. And okay, again, her, her spring was awesome. Her awesome, autumn was awesome. Uh, it'd be great if you could emulate that in the spring. Yeah, if she can do, do yeah, if she can do again in spring, what she did in autumn would be fantastic. And if we get that Peter Moody to get that Swedish group up here, so have a go in autumn. What a race that would be, eh? Just for a minute there, I thought you must have been taking the She's the number one in the country. She's the number one female in the country, most definitely. Great to see her. Thank you. There she is, Gay Waterhouse, knows all around. Yeah, that was magic. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, you know, probably looked and felt more than the barrier trial to her, but it's. Uh, yeah, you know, always well, great to get the first one out of the way, and you know she's going as good as we thought. You come a lot. You've come a long way. Along uh, with singing and they. Rosehill Gardens runners in the yard for the Debordley Wines. Golden Rose, the Group One, worth a million dollars for the three-year-olds, and it is the filly for Batnag Farm who is the favourite. And a cheetah at three dollars opened at two thirty, just drifting out to three dollars. But money for Cabayan, four dollars twenty now into three dollars fifty. Let's have a look at the field. Name of champions and what a crack field of three-year-olds we have this year. Number one, Epaulette, the Black Opal winner. This is a three-quarter brother to the Caulfield Guineas winner in Helmet, and uh, what quality. She's so good. She's such a balanced classy sort of a filly. It is tough against the boys, but gee, she looks great. Have a look at the muscles, particularly in the back end. She's a quality filly too from... Two Got out of $3 to Cheetah. Well, I can tell you, she's been heavily back now into $2.60. Warwick Brook, the uh, state manager of Bordley Wines, just Warwick, a great association of Bordley Wines, and of course, Hadanak Farm team. I wish everyone the best of luck. This is the first group one of the new season here in Sydney, and number 10, Cheetah, the filly, has been very heavily back. Ask you so Nikita, after uh, getting out to three dollars when uh, all the support came for Cabon, they're off and racing now. And doubtfully began very fast and took the lead from Asher Ken. Nikita came out fast. He's up in the first couple early on. Cabane handy on the inside, and your song is starting to dart around the field now and wants the front. So your song went up to join doubtfully Asher Ken and Nikita. Then Cabane back on the inside. Amarino just getting shuffled back there. He got on heels and lost a bit of ground. Nice Legion, Sham Express, and then came Albrecht and Epilep. The stable mates are out the back as they run to the side of the track and doubtfully is the leader from your song, Asha Can. Nikita's in a lovely spot, fourth one out. About two and a half off the lead. Cabayan back fifth on the inside. On the outside of it, Amarino. And then came Ninth Legion, Sham Express in the second half of the field. And well back was Albrecht on the inside and Epilep keeping it company as they run to the home turn. We're doubtfully led from your song, Nikita starting to stride up three wide. Then Asher can combine getting off the fence looking for room. Amarino's down the outside and then Night Legion as they turn for home and your song took the lead but Keita's on the scene and quickly moved up to hit the front now. Then Asher can Cabayan's out and running on and down the outside Epilep is starting to storm home with Albrecht. It's Epilep and Albrecht down the outside together. Epilep and Albrecht. Albrecht on the inside. Epilep the outside. Epilep on it. Epilep beat Albrecht and Asher can then came in behind them, Night Legion, followed by Cabayan and Nikita Ramarino. Your song, doubtfully, in Sham Express was last in. He's a stunning looking cold. He's heading for the Caulfield Guineas. He's taken out the Golden Rose, the Group One, the million dollar race for the three year olds, Epilette and Albrecht. Well, they settled last, the Dali stable mates, and they've come with a great run to get past Nikita. What about you? Couldn't have dreamt of that. Uh, uh, head and head war, and you've run one, two in the first Group One, the Borley Wines Golden Rose. Uh, fantastic, mate. 
when the draw came out, as you said earlier, I thought, shit, <laughs> what a draw. But as it turned out, um, they, they pulled, actually did a lot of things wrong, both horses did, but uh, God, the last film was enormous. So I just can't be, no words can't put in it. I can't describe how good it was. His run here was 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 super a few weeks ago, Epaulet, and he, he's backed that right up. No, he's a great colt, mate. And, um, he, that man that he's out of the century, she's a champion. Like She's thrown a helmet and ball bows, two great horses, and... Two, three group one winners out of the match. She's a great mare, and I hope we can go on that. Let's hope we can have a crack at Piero at her best. The the uh, the barrier. We can have a crack at Piero at her best. The the uh, the barrier draw. Be close. At point one of a length behind Piero in the Todman, so you can understand Pete Snowden wanting to have another crack at Piero. At one epaulette. It was super a few weeks ago, epaulette, and he, he's backed that right up. No, he's a great colt, mate. It, um, he, that man that he's out of the century, she's a champion. Like she's thrown a helmet and ball bows, two great horses, and. Two, three group one winners out of the match. She's a great mare, and I hope they can go on that. I say we're going to have a crack at Piero at her best. The the uh, the barrier draw. Be close. At point one of a length behind Piero in the Todman, so you can understand Pete Snowden wanting to have another crack at Piero. One epaulette, eleven six.